Cowboy, Trigger, his golden Palomino, and Day Levin, Queen of the West, with Pat Brady, their comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. <laughs> well, riders, Trigger here is raring to go, so let's get started with today's story. Got him and he's on his way in. You ready to make things look convincing? Go ahead, boys. It's got to be done. Wait. What do they show up now for? I don't know. I didn't expect him this soon. Come on, finish me off. We still got time. Come on, Nick. It's time for us to get out of here. Let's take a look. you down to the sheriff's office. No, Roy. Wait. I don't want to press charges. Why not? On account of Ed. His condition isn't too good. I can't allow anything to excite him. I'll explain later. Well, maybe you're right. You two get on your horses and keep going until you get clear out of this territory. Don, would you mind telling me what this is all about? No, but, but I'd like to get cleaned up before Ed finds out there's been some trouble. Roy! Roy! What's the trouble? Something's happened to Ed. Read that. Oh, oh I don't feel so good. Well, maybe you're hurt worse than you think you are. Read that. We've got Ed Bailey. If you want him back, it will cost $5,000. We'll tell you where to deliver it in 24 hours. Well, we can't wait any 24 hours. Ed can't live that long without insulin. Well, Don, you better stay here. We'll get on his trail. No. That was my boss. Oh. Don, you're in no condition to ride. You must stay here. I'll send Bullet after Pat. He can come back and look after him. I'll write the note. Take the input. Well, let me help you up on the porch. I wonder who would want to kidnap Ed sick as he was. I don't know, but I'm sure going to find out. Bullet! Come on, Bullet. Ah! Take this to Pat, boy. Go ahead. Take it to Pat. Take it to Pat, boy. Pat'll be along pretty soon. Step close, Bishop. Wait a minute. What is this? Roy Rogers rode in while we were beating up Wallace. He may be suspicious and be on our trail. Drive ahead, we'll talk on the way. It's not safe to hide in here. I want you to drag him on up to Greenhorn's barn. Why me? Why not Hobo? Hobo's riding on in the middle of the city and getting himself arrested. Arrested? Yeah. I want him in jail overnight. 
That may give him an alibi in case somebody was on his trail just now. Did something happen? Did he run into trouble? Don't ask him any questions. Just hurry it up. We can't afford delays. I want to get the mineral steady within 15 or 20 minutes. Easy, it's only a couple of miles. Yeah, well, take care of the horses, will you? Do I untangle them? No. I want everything to look ordinary and peaceful. But the horses ought to be ready just in case things start stacking up on us. somebody else. My legs are sensitive. <laughs> Probably another one of them drippy love notes from one of my many admirers. You know, Bullet, you've got to quit hanging around these girls. These love notes give you the goosebumps. <laughs> hey, this is from Roy and Dale. Kidnappers got Ed Bailey and hurt Don Wallace. We're on the trail. Will you come out and look? Kidnappers hurt Don Wallace, we're on the trail. Will you come out and look? C come on, Bullet. Hey, buddy. Just a minute. You mean me? Yeah. I'm in the mood for a ride, and I'm aiming to have one. Well, it sure is a nice day for it. <laughs> sure is. I'm going with you in this air-conditioned junk. Now, just a cotton pick a minute. You can't talk that way about Nellie Bell. And besides that, you ain't going with me because I've got business to do. Listen, Squinty. I said I'm having a ride. Oh, boy, Bullet. Teach him some manners. Okay, Bullet, that's enough. You heard what the man said. Come on. I know when I'm licked. I won't give you no more trouble. Well, if I had more time, I'd take you to the sheriff and have you arrested for molesting a peaceful citizen. What's the matter? You afraid to take me in? Even with that dog, you afraid to take me in? traveling together and they stopped here together. Well, shouldn't we go in here? No. Old Ed's probably in that bug board and we can't waste any time. It's all right, he's going on. Come on, let's eat. Hey, Dale. Maybe we'd better take a look in that cabin. Old Ed might be in there. Right. Quickest way, one of us will ride up to Greenhorn's barn and get Ed Bailey. Should be safe enough to hide him here now. Not yet. We won't make any move until we're dead sure Rogers won't be back. Hey, sounds like we got more company. Wallace, what the devil is he doing coming here? Hey, look, Dale. 
Don Wallace. Yeah. Evidently, he wasn't hurt as bad as we thought. You know better than to come here. Roy Rogers is on our trail. He may have seen you. If he has, we're in trouble. I know he's on your trail. I came here to warn you. Suppose he breaks in and finds the old man. The old man's not here. We sent him up to Greenhorn's bar. You better get back up to the ranch and wait till Rogers calls on you. Suppose he doesn't. He will. He knows the old man will die if he doesn't get his medicine every six hours. Now listen, when Rogers does get there, you persuade him to talk to the banker and let you have 5,000 of the old man's money for the ransom. Look, this deal better go through, otherwise I go to jail for embezzlement instead of inheriting the old man's money. Roy, let's rush that cabin. Every minute counts now. We'll have to take it easy, deal. The old man can't stand the excitement. Let's move up. Come over here. Sit down. Stop your worrying, will you? But I gotta get that money. Then Bailey can die and everything will be all right. You'll get the money all right. And by the time you do, the old man will be dead. We'll put his body on the trail beside his ranch. And that way it'll look like a natural death. You were here, Dale. sure before we leave here. How? You go around back and stir up a racket. So be sure and stay out of sight. Somebody ain't even here. Find Roy's trail bullet? Go get him, boy.
off your horse. Dale, keep an eye on the trail in case they're following us. Right. Inside. What are you going to do it? I'm going to get some information out of it. What have you done with Ed Bailey? I don't recall ever knowing anybody by the name of Ed Bailey. Listen, stranger. There's a man's life at stake, and you're going to talk. Looks like we lost him. He must have turned off. We better double back. We got to stop Rogers. Look, for the last time, you're going to talk or else. All right, I'll talk. He's up at Greenhorn's barn. Well, that's more like it. And it better be true. Hey, Dale, bring my rope. Right. Did you find out anything? Yeah. He said that Mr. Bailey's up at Greenhorn's barn. Greenhorn's barn? How can you do a thing like that to an old man that's sick? It takes all kinds of people to make a world, Dale. How can you be so completely without feeling? He won't get away with it, Dale. We'll come back and take care of him after we found Ed. Let's hurry, Dale. Let's get inside. You didn't lead him here, did you? Watch his own head trail. You'll take care of him, all right. You better make sure the old man's almost dead. They gave me the slip. I lost him up in the rock. We better get him out of here. Yeah, we'll take him in that wagon outside. You boys bring him on up. What's the matter? Roger, it's that Evans girl. We're going to have a job blasting him out of his rock. Take this. 
I've got a gun. I know, but this way you won't have to reload. I want you to keep him busy from here while I slip around back and get inside. Okay. But you stay down and don't take any chances. All right, you be careful, too.
again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Happy trails to you. Till we meet Underdog Bullet. I've got to hand it to you. You certainly have a way of wrapping up a case and handing it to the jury on a platter. You can't go too far wrong telling the truth. Roy, about that thousand dollars I owe you, I can't pay it back as soon as I expect it. That's all right, Carl. Take your time. Hey, Bullet, where are you going? know you were in town. Looks like you're moving in. <laughs> no, I'm just here for a few days while they fix the roof on my house. That storm last week blew half of it away. Well, that's too bad. What are you doing here? Testifying in the Ben Carter case over water rights. Waiting to sell some cattle. Here, I'll take those. Oh, thank you. You stay here, Bullet. Hi, Jim. Good morning, Dale. Hi, Roy. Why well, didn't you shop? I'd have brought you back then. Well, I need the exercise. <laughs> well, howdy. Hi, Dad. Hello, Mr. Hey, Roy. I, uh, I hope you're not in a hurry for that grub stake you loaned me. I haven't found any gold yet, but well, I got some real good signs. Well, you just holler when you strike it rich. <laughs> Roy! You're in trouble. Yeah, Gil Murray's in town and he's hunting for you. Well, is that bad? Is that bad? Well, you poor trusting pilgrim. He's aiming to gun you down. Well, why would he want to shoot me? Well, you're the one that captured him. It was your evidence that sent him to the pen. Yeah, I've searched everywhere, and there's shot an eye of him, a uh, sign of Sim. Uh, now, take uh, it easy, Sheriff. Back up and start over slowly. Look, Roy, there's no charge against Murray. But if I find him, I can hold him for questioning long enough for you to light out of town. I'm not lighting out anywhere. Roy, if you meet up with Gil Murray, you're a goner. Not that you ain't as fast as he is, but thanks again, you. Why? Well, last night I dreamt I was carrying a candle through a dark house and someone snuck up behind me and blowed out the light. Now, that's the worst kind of a omen there is, and you know what that means. But you shouldn't be afraid in the dark. Now, listen, if anyone's looking for me, you can tell them I'll be available this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Spread that around town. Be available at 3 o'clock. 11.30. I wonder what time it is. of Roy yet? No, not yet. I'll tell you, Sheriff, he blowed out the candle somebody did. Worst omen I ever had, and I dreamt from Lulu's in my time. That blasted is wrong. Uh, well wrong. No law to prevent murder. Uh, I mean, no law to prevent murder. Here he comes. You 
you looking for me, Gil? Yeah. Before I went to prison, you and me had a little talk. I promised you that when I got out, I'd go straight. Remember? I remember. Well, I just wanted you to know I, I can't keep that promise. Why not? Gotta eat. Can't find anybody fool enough to hire an ex-convict who used to be a member of the Lassiter gang. Well, you found one now. You mean a new? No. I didn't come here belly aching for no job. But I need a hand to ride herd on some cattle. I'm drifting on to the next state. Oh, and maybe I'll join Lassiter again in Mexico. The cattle are down in the shipping pens. Nothing to it. I just wanted you to know why I'm breaking my word. Fifty a month and grub. You need a new outfit. Here. Let's get something to eat. Well, you look at that. They're going away together friendly. After this, I wouldn't be surprised to see him riding a grizzly with a rattler for a hackamore. Roy! Roy! Oh, oh. Roy, don't do it! Don't do it! Did you see what he did? What? He walked right under a ladder. He's just as good as buried right now. Hey, Roy. Come over here, Pat. Hey, where's Gil Murray? I got a letter for him. Isn't he down to shipping pins? No, I couldn't have met him. <laughs> With that new shirt he's wearing, he looks like a sunset at which somebody throws a fried egg. Pat, this pillow's pretty hot. Will you unsaddle him and cool him out? Yeah. Wow. Whew. Whoever was riding you wanted to get there in a hurry, but they shouldn't have left you all lathered up like this. Roy, do you think it was wise hiring an outlaw? You know, if anything happens, people are going to blame you for taking him on. When a man has served his term, he deserves an even break. Besides, nothing's going to happen. I ain't so sure about that. Last night, I dreamt I was being chased by a six-foot Gila monster. That's almost as bad a sign as having the light blow down. It wasn't the Gila monster that bothered you. It was that third helping of mincemeat pie you had on top of the pork and beans. It wasn't neither. It was my dream. I guess I ought to know what I saw. You know, that Gila monster looked just like somebody I know, but I'll be doggone if I can remember who. All right. I'm looking for Gil Murray. Where is he? What do you want with him? Well, the Blue River State was held up this morning by a masked bandit answering his description. If he's wearing a mask, what makes you think it was Gil? Well, nobody but him would be found dead in the shirt that he was wearing, even if he did try to hide it under a slicker. Looks like you took a viper to your bosom, Roy. Remember, in this country, a man is innocent until he's proved guilty. Goes out to our ranch. That's right, Roy. We looked for you, but you were gone, so I told Gil to go ahead. I knew you wouldn't mind. Oh, no, not at all. Sheriff, Dale's ranch is a long way from the Blue Stage Road. If you want to check on Gil's story, well, I'll go hope you're said. Uh, said your hope. Uh, go jump in the lake. Hey, bid me back my horse. Hey, give me back my horse. Give me back my horse. Hey! Hi, Mr. Elway. Gil. Well, hello. Ain't you taking a chance speaking to me, Mr. Adams? You'll have to make yourself mighty unpopular around here. But don't worry about what other people think. It's usually the worst, that's human nature. But Gil, if you ever need any legal advice, don't hesitate to call on me. That's right, nice of you. Well, I feel indebted to you for losing your case three years ago. You did your best. Besides, I reckon I had it coming. Roy. Any news about that stage holdup? Not yet. Didn't the gunman leave a trail? Yes, he did. The sheriff and I followed him straight into the river. I'm sure he came back here. What puzzles me is where did he get a shirt like mine? Storekeeper only had one of them in stock. He bought it at Hastings Department Store, 10 miles from here. Hastings. 
the clerk say what he looked like? No, he didn't remember much about him. Except that he was about your size. That don't make sense, bro. I ain't been near Hastings. Besides, why should I buy another shirt? The sheriff thinks you were trying to throw us off the track by impersonating yourself. And he's going to do a lot more thinking when he finds out an old Indian trail runs from Dale's Ranch straight to the Blue Stage Road. I didn't do it, Roy. That's all I want to know. You mean you're taking my word for it? Why not? Anything new about the holdup? Uh, no, Roy. There was nothing taken from the stage that could be traced. The only thing he took was cash. Hi, right, Dale. Find out anything about the pedal? What pedal? The one with the liver staple. Been ridden to a left. It belongs to the clerk at the hotel. Jim Willow? Mm -hmm. Hey, now we're sitting somewhere. Uh, I've been getting somewhere. No, Jim Willow was at the dentist when the stage was held up. Oh, Jesus. Frank! If you want to borrow my horse, you might at least ask me politely. Say, I didn't borrow your battle aim horse. I didn't, uh, your lad dame horse. I... Well, somebody took him. I mean, somebody took him. I left him rich to the rothering hawk. Hoot, hit, uh, hoot. Oh, mustard and custard, Jeff. You got me all mixed up. Hello. Hello, Sheriff. The bank messenger's been held up and shot. Who? He was dry gulch two miles south of town and robbed of $20,000. A rancher brought him into Doc Smiley's. All right, thanks, Carl. Let Talbot with dry gulch two miles south of town. He's over Doc Smiley's now. Well, we better get over there quick and see if we can get any information out of him. See you later, Dale. Hi, Doc. Did you talk to Bud Talbot? Yes. But if you come to ask a lot of fool questions, you can march right out of here, right now. Well, this is really important. He's a sick man, a very sick man. Listen, Doc, we know that he's suffering from Ted Lord's uh, lead poisoning, but the law just can't wait. Frank Nelson, where my patient's concerned, I'm the law. Now, you see here, Will Smiley, if I... You sound like a couple of bawling cats. It'll only take a minute, Doc. How you feeling, bud? Oh, pretty fair. I'm kind of worried about Lucy. Did you get a good look at the bomb that plugged you, bud? Sure did. She's expecting company for supper. Did you recognize him? Sure did. If I'm not there in time, she's going to raise Holy Ned. Well, who was he? Gil Murray. That's just as I suspected. Listen, you think you can tell her I'm kind of laid up and it ain't my fault, Roy? I sure will. How do you know it was Gil Murray? That's enough. That's more than enough. Did he wear a mask? Sure. But I can tell by his height and build. What'd I tell you? If he has a relapse, I won't be responsible. Oh, dike down, pipe down, will you? He wore the same shirt. I couldn't make a mistake by that shirt. That's enough for me. And it's high time, too. Hey, Roy, you'll, you'll try and call her, will you, huh? Don't worry, bud. I'll take care of it. Thanks, Doc. Just a minute, Murray. Hello, Sheriff. Roy. I've been asking you for taking up the bank messenger and gunning him down. Bank messenger? Now, don't play dumb. Bud Talbot recognized that shop and shirt you're wearing. Look, if I did it, do you think I'd advertise it? Where have you been for the last couple of hours, Gil? Well, if you must know, I rode over the north fork of the river. Yeah, that's where the stagecoach was held up. I know that. That's why I went out there, to see what I could find. I'm sick and tired of being accused of things I didn't do. Anybody see you? Well, I did. Gil and I rode back to town together. Well, Sheriff, it was your horse at the stage robber road. Now you're giving him an alibi. You can't fool me. You two are in cahoots. But if you wasn't hiding behind that star, I'd bust you in a low. Who's hiding behind what star? Not trying to knock me in the boat. Here, take it easy, Sheriff. Boy! Boy! I found the horse, and he was all lathered up like he'd getting ready to shave. And the outlaw that held up Talbot did steal him. And brought him back. He must be around town here someplace. Come on, Sheriff, we've got work to do. Thanks, 
Roy, we've gone over this town with a fine tooth comb, and everybody in it seems to have an ironclad alibi, except Carl Adams and Spade Oakley. Spade left for that gold mine of his last night. But he could have slipped back into town. Yeah, maybe. But Carl Adams was working in his office. The janitor saw him through the window. No, oh, he only saw his coat. It could have been draped over the back of a chair. Well, thanks, Marshal. I'll tell Roy. Every one of the Lassiter gang is in prison, except Lassiter himself. And he's in hiding somewhere in Mexico. Well, that means we can count them out. Well, you two have certainly stirred up a hornet's nest in this here town. They're blaming you, Frank, for not locking up Gil. They're blaming Roy for hiring him in the first place. thing wide open if I could only remember who that heel monster in my dream looked like. Going somewhere? Yeah. I reckon you better get yourself another hand. I'm drifting. Why don't you wait till the cattle are sold? It's only a few more days. Nothing doing. I'm leaving now. Running away is no good. When the going gets tough, that's when you have to face it. Nobody's making me go, and I ain't running. What do you want to do, brand yourself as an outlaw? You know what the people think. I know what I'm doing. Besides, I got my own reasons. Well, whatever they are, they're not good enough. They are for me. Nobody's going to keep me from moving if I want. I am. You try it, and I'll drop you, Roy. Go ahead and pull the trigger. Nobody's stopping you. Somebody near, I'm warning you. Don't do it, Roy. I'll shoot you. <laughs> Wait a minute, Gil. Now listen. You're sticking your head right into a noose. It's my head. I'll do what I want with it. You'll me. You know, it looks like I made a real strike. And if it pans out, I'm going to cut you in. Fine. But uh, don't say anything about this to anyone until I get back from Reno. I want to make sure I got it stowed up tight. When are you leaving? Well, as soon as I can. I'll let you know when I get back. And thanks again for the loan. Bye. Bye. Roy, you don't think Oakley could be tied in with this, do you? I don't know, but I'd sure like to take a look at that mine. Roy? Roy? The bank messenger just died. What? Some of the fellas are so riled they're going to string Gil up. They're saying if it hadn't been for you, Bud Talbot would still be alive. And if you try to interfere again, they'll turn on you, too. Deal. Find Gil and take him to your ranch. Pat, you and Willow see if you can hold up that mob and Carl and I'll get the sheriff. Inside. Sheriff! Sheriff, there's a lynch mob. Hey, Gil, what are you doing here? You know of a better place to get away from the lynch mob? What'd you lock him up for, Sheriff? Well, what do you expect me to do? He walked in here and admits pulling those stick-up jobs. Pin a medal on him? You mean that he confessed? Gil, this is no time to play games. Why don't you tell him the truth? Sure. 
I'll tell him the same thing I told him before. I was just using you for a cover. You're lying. You sure are a sucker, Roy. Give you a hard luck story, you fall for it like a ton of bricks. You know, you ain't half as smart as you think you are. That's enough out of you, Murray. I ain't hit a prisoner yet, but I'm sure right on the verge. Now, get out of here, both of you, before I lose my leper and forget I'm a lost of the patrol. Officer, a, a sheriff. Well, Roy, it looks like I'll have to cancel my trip. Naturally, I'll stay here and defend Gill if he wants me as his attorney. You mean you're going to leave town? Well, my cousin offered me a job with his firm. In fact, he sent me an advance in salary. Oh, which reminds me, Roy. Here's that thousand dollars I owe you. Thanks. Well, I'd better get back and tell the boys about Gil being locked up before any trouble starts. Hello. Joe's Grill? Is Laura Rogers there? Never mind. Say, the sheriff's looking for you. He's not in his room, enough. Oh, there you are. Hey, what did you do with Gil Murray? What did I do with him? Yeah, now, don't try to tell me you didn't bring him out of jail. Bring him out of jail? Have yes. you escaped? Leave the soup. Uh, throw him the coop. You're going to get right on his trail and bring him back. Okay, but wait till I put this $10,000 where it'll be safe. $10,000? Yeah, I just closed my cattle deal. Put that in your safe for me, will you, Jim? I can put it in, but it won't do no good. Why? The lock's busted. Well, put it up in my room. Bring me the key. I'll meet you at the South Ridge with the posse, Roy. If you ask me, I don't think Gil's left town yet. He's probably laying low till dark. We better start searching here. Sheriff, you and Pat take one side of the street and I'll take the other. Carl, you and Oakley cover the alley in case he tries to get out that way. Right. Here's your key. Put the money in the desk. Here's my key, Dale. Now you know what to do. In exactly ten minutes, go upstairs. I'll stick around outside and watch my chance and come up the back way. Right. Thank you. 
He's going to have to think about this week whether he wants to or not. <laughs> that blasted painter's leaving buckets and ladders around where a body can walk into. <laughs> to go, so let's get started with today's story. But I tell you, we gotta ship that stock right away. Now we need the money. Why do we need money? We've got a nice balance in our ledgers. Oh, that could be wiped out overnight. Now listen to me, Bill. You're hiding something from me. Now, what's the truth of the matter? Have you been doctoring those books again? Are you accusing me of stealing? Oh, well, not exactly, but it wouldn't be the first time you pulled a fast one. Well, I'll pull a fast one, all right. Of all the cold-blooded murders, that's right. And it's too bad you were around to see it. Give me that gun. That's so fast, Sonny. What happened to Zach? Get the deputy. Tom just shot him. Why, you dirty lion little... Shut up! Or you'll get the same as Zach got. Get them off? Yeah, they were over near the pasture. Good. When the sheriff say he'd be back? He didn't say. He went up to Paradise Valley. Hey, that's the deputy sheriff and Bill Eaton chasing Tom Larrabee. Yeah, and it looks like Tom's got himself into some trouble. Well, they'll never catch Tom. He knows this country like he knows his own saddle. Well, what are you grinning about? Tom's a fugitive or Jake wouldn't be after him. Yeah, I never did like Bill Eaton and that hair trigger temper of his. What are you grinning about? I never did like him either. <laughs> what do you say we go see what it's all about? That's a deal. <laughs> could have got to. Well, he can't be far. Let's keep looking. You know something? Yeah, a murderer. A murderer? That's right, Miss Evans. Tom Larrabee. I don't believe it. He just murdered Zachary. You sure? Tom never seemed like the killer type to me. You see this? The 
You recognize the initials carved on it? See, yeah. Well, it could be Tom. Well, that's the gun that did it. We're taking it into town for evidence. I can't understand him going berserk like this. What happened? Well, Zach balled Tom out for neglecting his fence riding. All of a sudden, Tom loses his temper, pulls his gun, and shoots Zach right through the heart. Well, then I grabbed his gun and held him until Jake got here. Well, let's get back to Mineral City and form a posse. Tom can't get far handcuffed. That's a good idea. Bullet, go find him. Okay, Tom, you can come out now. You and Bullet think you're pretty smart, don't you? No, but we kind of outsmarted Bill and Jake. What happened? Bill Eaton killed Zachary with my gun. Now he's trying to pin it on me. He's got your gun, and he can make it pretty rough on you. I know. It's my word against his. Couldn't have happened at a worse time. What do you mean? My girl, Ellen, she's getting into town today. We're going to get married. Don't worry, Tom. If she loves you, she won't believe you're a killer. But that uncle of hers, he'll make her think different. He keeps telling her I'm no good. Help me get these off, Roy, and square myself. I'll help you, Tom, but you'll have to do as I say. What's that? You'll have to give yourself up. Give myself up? It's the only way, Tom. While you're in jail waiting trial, it'll give me a chance to do some scouting around. Roy's right, Tom. If you run away, you'll only get yourself in deeper. What about Ellen? I'll talk to her. Well, okay. But I still don't like it. That Bill Eaton's pretty smart. He'll get me hung yet. Not if you're innocent. Come on, let's go back to town. Come on, Bullet. <laughs> don't worry about Ellen, Tom. I'll take care of her. Thanks, Dad. Tell you, Sheriff, it was a plain case of cold-blooded murder. Wait a minute, Bill. Well, Roy, where'd you find him? Tom decided to give himself up, Sheriff. It's a good thing. You know, we was just organizing a posse. Looks bad for you, Tom, running away like that. That's what Dale said. That's why I gave myself up to Roy here. Listen, Sheriff, I didn't kill Zach. Bill Eaton here killed him, and now he's trying to frame me. You sniveling liar. There ain't a crook inside a prison doesn't claim he was framed. Wait a minute. Pipe down, both of you. Tom, I'm holding you for the murder of John Zachary until court convenes next week. Jake, put him in a cell. I've got one just his size. That no good cattle tramp wouldn't be here to meet us. I don't understand what you see in that Galway. He's the man I'm going to marry. I haven't given my consent, my dear. And I never will. I'm over 21. If I didn't have business here in Mineral City, I'd never have brought you here. Then I'd have come myself. You're Ellen Kelsey, aren't you? That's right. I'm Dale Evans. Tom Larrabee asked me to meet you. Well, nothing's happened to him. No. I tell you, let's have a cup of coffee, shall we? I'd like to talk with you. Well, is he sick or... Oh, he's in fine health. Pat, will you take this coffee back to the restaurant? I'll meet you over Hey. You with the high heels and the low forehead. Take my bag, too. What's the matter with you, mister? Your arm broke? The young lady's with me. Miss Kelsey's my niece. Well, I'll bet she's about as happy with that as a woodpecker is with a sore bill. Well, that's the story, miss. Tom says he was framed and Bill says he wasn't. I guess it'll be up to the court to decide. Framed? <laughs> Why, there isn't a crook in prison that doesn't claim he's framed. It sounds kind of familiar, Mr. Kelsey. Bill Eaton said the same thing. You don't happen to know him, do you? As a matter of fact, I do. I came out here to talk business with him. Dale, will they let me see Tom? Of course they will, honey. I'll never believe that Tom is guilty. He's always been kind and honest. I told you Tom was no good. 
I've just got to see him. Well, I want no part of him. I'll wait for you here. Well, it's about time you got here. Getting that money wasn't easy. Well, what's the dope? It's all settled. I take over the ranch, only... Uh, only what? Only I get a bigger end of the profit. Why? Because I'm fixing things so there won't be any trouble. What do you mean? I understand Zach is dead. Yeah, he's murdered by one of our hands. That makes it easy for you to sell, doesn't it? What are you driving at? Take it easy, Bill. Take it easy. I'm only stating facts. Survivor in a partnership like this gets the whole business. That means a double profit for you. So I want a bigger cut. Okay, but first I want to see the color of the money. That'll come. But I want to see the legal papers and the deed. Then we'll settle the price. Better at the ranch. You'll have to come out there. Okay. You do believe me, don't you? Of course I believe you, Tom. Now if we can just convince them. I think Roy Rogers is on your side. I know he is. He'll get me out of this. He promised to help. I hope he can. Roy will do it all right. Before you know it, Bill Eaton will be in jail instead of me. Whoa! Take it easy. What's the hurry? You know what I just heard over at the bank? What? Bill Eaton selling his ranch to that gal's uncle. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Seems kind of funny he'd sell out right after his partner gets killed. Well, maybe Bill didn't want to run the ranch alone. Maybe he just wants to grab a chunk of money and clear out. Come to think of it, Zach didn't have any heirs. That'd leave the ranch free and clear to Eaton. Mighty convenient, ain't it? What do you say we ride out and have a talk with Mr. Eaton? Right. They didn't know I was listening. But I heard Tom say Roy Rogers was going to get after you and put you behind bars. That Rogers. Always sticking his nose in other people's business. You get back to town, Jake. I'll handle Rogers. Why are you so worried about Rogers, Bill? You didn't kill Zach yourself, did you? Suppose I did. Nobody can prove it. He was shot with Tom's gun, and that's what'll stand up in court. Will it? Suppose Rogers comes snooping around. Suppose he does. He can't find anything. Now, wait a minute. Don't be so darn stubborn. We've got a lot of cash at stake, and we can't take chances. Uh, I reckon we can't. We better get back into town and take care of Rogers. That suits me. Because if Rogers gets Tom free, he's going to marry my niece. I don't want that to happen. Why not? Is it her money you're using to buy me out? Maybe. Well, it looks like we're in this together. I don't carry a gun, but I see you're well healed. I'll get my rifle. I just saw Rogers and Brady heading this way. You get back to town. We'll handle Rogers.
almost got it. Hit and run, huh? Did you get a look at them lizard herders? No, by the time I got up there, they were gone. We might as well keep going to the easy ranch. Well, howdy, Roy. Hi, Bill. Hello there, Pat. You two fellas know Martin Chelsea, don't you? Sure, we've met. Anything wrong? Yes, plenty. Somebody tried to ambush us on our way out here. Ambushed? Say, hey, that's too bad, fellas. Did you see who did it? No. You didn't happen to see any strangers around your ranch here, did you? No. Mighty funny how they disappeared so quick. You fellas don't think we had anything to do with that ambush, do you? Take a look at that. Well, this hasn't been shot. And Bill, you don't carry a gun. That's right. One of those bushwhackers was carrying a rifle. You got a rifle? It's only a hunting rifle. I haven't used it since last fall. Well, maybe you fellas would like to examine that, too. That might not be a bad idea. Look, I don't like you two busting in here this way and acting like we done the bushwhacking. I'll take it easy, Bill. Well, I don't know what you two want here. But I'm sure it ain't a friendly visit, so why don't you get going? Now, listen to me, Bill. Tom was a friend of mine. Oh, well, if you're a friend of that sneaking, murdering saddle tramp, you're no friend of mine, so get out of here. didn't have those guns on. Get out of here, both of you! Better be under the same rock with a rattler. Come on, Pat, let's get out of here. Come back when everybody's a little more level-headed. How about my gun? If he'd have been more my age, I'd have taken him apart like a dollar watch. Shouldn't have lost your temper like that, Bill. You gave yourself away when you snatched that gun out of my holster. So what? Isn't that the way Zach was killed? I'll tell you one thing, Martin. Them two fellas just signed their own death warrant. You seem to be doing some pretty heavy thinking, Roy. I am, Bill. I'm thinking that Bill Eaton gave himself away when he snatched Martin's gun. Maybe Zach was killed that way. Yeah, but thinking and proving are two different things. Well, I think we ought to have a look at that hunting rifle of Bill's. Yeah, and maybe we can find a six shooter that's been fired recently. Let's go out and have a look at that ranch. Okay. And if Bill Eaton gets in my way, I'll hit him so hard it'll drive ten folks in our dog houses. No, you don't. You're staying here and looking after that jaw. Bullet, watch after Pat. Wait a minute, Roy. Here comes Mark. I wonder what he wants. Howdy. Howdy. My niece inside? I guess so. Thanks. Bill's alone at his ranch. We couldn't have picked a better time. Let's go. Why won't you move out to the ranch? Because I want to stay here. I suppose it's because you can visit Tom in jail. Yes, for one thing. For another thing, I like it here. Now, listen, Ellen. There's no reason for our being angry with each other. I'm the only kin you've got. Then please try and understand, Uncle Martin. Oh, how's your jaw? Oh, it don't bother me enough to keep it from wagging at the right time. <laughs> Yeah. Come on outside. I want to talk to you. Jake, you got to frame it so Tom escapes. Things are getting too hot for us. How's Tom's escaping going to help matters? He won't escape far without a bullet in his back. Oh, no. I ain't killing nobody. You just get him out of jail. Bill and I'll do the rest. Tell him a necktie party's coming after him. You're giving him a break. Okay. But what about the sheriff? Have Tom tie you up, but be sure that it looks good.
can't see anyone in there, Dale. We'll take it easy. something. What are you two doing here? Stay away from that door. I'll have the law on both of you for breaking and entering. Put that rifle back. This rifle's been fired too. While you're calling the law, you might tell them what you use these guns for. That's not my gun. That belongs to Martin. How about the rifle? Well, that's mine, but I used it on a jackrabbit this afternoon. I thought you said you hadn't been hunting since last fall. You never carry a gun. Yes, here's a six-shooter and a rifle that's both been fired recently. Well, what are you going to do about it? We're taking these along to the sheriff. Come on, Dale. Well, go ahead. I'll tell him how you broke into my house. Jake! Who did this, Jake? Tom Larrabee, who do you think? I was going to give him his supper and he knocked me out with that stool. It's funny he didn't take your gun. Yeah, yeah, ain't it? Well, I'd better hurry up and tell the sheriff so he can form a posse. You just better take it easy. You've been knocked out. Dale, will you run over to the sheriff's house and bring him back here pronto? I sure will. You're going, Bill. I'm getting out of here. Rogers found those guns. He's taken them to the sheriff. But take it easy, Bill. I got things fixed. The sheriff's going to be plenty busy tonight. I had Jake let Tom out. What? Why did you do that? Well, I'm figuring he'll come here for a showdown. Then we'll take care of him for good. Yeah, that's right. There's no law against shooting an escaping prisoner. And while we're waiting, you can pay me up my money. Okay with me. I can't understand how he hit you with that stool. What did you do? Walk into the cell with your eyes closed? He didn't hit him, Sheriff. There isn't a mark on him. Besides, why didn't Tom take his gun? Well, he took my horse. Ah, George, you're right, Roy. There's something fishy about this. I think you're in cahoots with Eaton and you let Tom go. Why would I do a fool thing like that? Because you knew he'd go straight to the EZ Ranch. Bill and Martin are probably there waiting for him right now. No! Oh. no. All right. Now you can stay right here until we get this thing straightened out. Let's get out to the easy ranch. We haven't any time to lose. And when things blow over, you'll get the rest of your money. Nothing doing. I want all my money now. I thought you were more interested in saving your skin. If you think you're going to blackmail me, you better not try it. You're not in a position to tell me what to do. Oh, no. Hold it, Bill. It's okay with me, only keep that wildcat off me. I thought you didn't carry a gun, Bill. Well, that, that gun's not mine. It, it belongs to Martin. Tom rushed in here and grabbed Martin's gun and killed him. And I took the gun away from Tom in self-defense. That's a lie. Bill pulled the same trick on Martin that he did on Zach. I saw it all from the window here. You're in no position to testify about anything, Tom. You broke jail and I'm taking you back there. We'll get the truth of this matter. Now's the time, Pat. Get Bill sore. 
hurry up. Huh? Get him sore enough and we'll settle this thing right here and now. I know what you mean, but why do I always have to be the guinea pig? Listen. That story you told it is phony as a jackass carrying a power puff. Shut up. This is none of your concern. You killed Martin. Not only that, you killed Zach in cold blood. You know, jail ain't good enough for you. You ought to be tarred and feathered and rid out of town on a rail and then left there hanging at the highest pine tree in the country to poison the buzzard. There you are, Sheriff. That's the way he does it. Yes, he doesn't carry a gun himself, but he's mighty spry about grabbing one out of someone else's holster. So that's the gag, huh? Well, you hung yourself that time. Tom, I got a better place for these cuffs. Did you have to wait so long to shoot? Well, I had to give him a chance to grab your gun. Well, sure. Otherwise, the experiment wouldn't have worked. Well, the next time you're experimenting, why don't you do it with something safe, like dynamite? <laughs> Roy and Dale, I'd like to thank you for believing in me. Well, it isn't hard to believe in someone that's always done right. That's right, Tom. A person's got to have faith in someone he knows to be good. Thanks, Roy. you got here is a bunch of worthless IOUs. You mean we robbed bank for nothing? Yeah, thanks to Comer here. Well, I don't know they have a bowl full of IOUs. The next time I get a partner, I'll get somebody who can read. Somebody up there.
feels it wouldn't fit in the corral with the gate open. It's a jumpy, Dale. Listen, you'd be jumpy, too, if you had $12,000 of Andy's cattle money in that old safe. I'll be glad when this town gets a bank. Not having one may discourage the Lawson gang from paying us a visit. How much did they get from the bank at Colville? <laughs> Only a bunch of old promissory notes. Will you send them to the bank for me? Yeah. Take a look at this. Oh. It's so chock full of gold, it's a poppin' at the scene. Why, you know, this time next year, we'll all be millionaires. Don't you think you better have that hunk of mountain I saved before you start spending the money, Pat? Huh? Oh, oh, sure. Yeah, it, it is really necessary, but I'll have old Sam Hanley take a look at it right away. Excuse yeah, me. <laughs> I brought Jones has been killed. They just found his body up in front of the mine shaft. We better get out there. Excuse me, Dale. Yeah. Hey, wait for me! Good clothes on. Must have been getting ready to go to town. He always came to town on Saturday. Well, why would anybody want to shoot old Hard Rock? He never had more than $50 in his whole life. I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Anybody see you do the job? What do you think? Okay, draw, but watch your step. We can't leave this hideout without being recognized. So remember, you're only useful to us as long as you can walk through that door and thumb your nose at the law. Roger's coming down street. He carries dead miner's body. Why didn't you get rid of the body? Now you really got the law on our trail. Well, oh, Bob, come on inside. I want to speak to you a minute. Go over and lay down, bullet. Hi, Roy. Hi, Dale. I have a registered letter here for you. Good. Your nephew just drove into town. Well, it's about time. If you'll just sign this receipt, I'll get back to work. All right. Hi, Bob. How's everything at the mine? Oh, all right, I guess. Do you want to see me, Rogers? Yeah, tell Fred to put a guard on the mine payroll, just until we get a line on Jake Lawson. I will if I see him. Hey, Bob. Would you mind getting this list of groceries for me? I've been so rushed, I just... Can't you find somebody else? My gosh, it's a mind. They say, Bob, will you fix this? Bob, will you go to town for this? And now you want me to be your errand boy. What do you think I am, a servant? Bob! Bob! Bob, dear. He's been acting like this for weeks, Roy. I don't know what's the matter with him. He just has a bad case of growing things. He'll be all right. Draw Reardon. Draw Reardon? Who's he? Troublemaker. Excuse me, Neil. Reardon, you just passing through or do you figure to stay? Why? You got something against me? Not yet. Well, when you do, let me know. Don't worry, I will.
get enough men to cover the hill trail? How about the water hole? All right, check with the border patrol and call me back. Boy, if you ain't all dressed up. Well, we're all set to go. Just look at all the stuff I got. <laughs> you know, when we find that gold, we're going places. Rome, Italy, Paris, Afrigan... Africa, Africa, Afghanistan. Af That's the place, Afghanistan. <laughs> Did Sam take a look at that ore yet? No, not yet, but he will as soon as he finishes some work up at the mine. Hey, that weren't no firecracker. Jim Nolan. All right, Reardon. Put that gun away and come along. Not so fast, Cheryl. He drew first. That's right, Roy. It was self-defense. I saw it. Nolan accused Draw of gunning down Hard Rock. Draw called him a liar and... Nolan went for his gun. You're nothing but a low-down murderer. If Jim went for his gun, you egged him into it. Draw, I can't hold you if you have witnesses. But if you take my advice, you'll drift. Jim Nolan was well-liked around here. Thanks for the warning. Bob, are you sure that's the way this thing is? to the ravine. They've given us a slip trigger. Oh, look. So you don't want to get into a fight, eh? Well, I ain't yearning to be shot at either. But do I complain? Yeah. I mean, no. Why do you suppose Roy brings us along if it isn't to protect him? So you better get to protecting, old boy. Or so help me, I'll see that you get a scholarship to the glue factory. Do you get me? Hey, hold it. I'm back to town. You're going the wrong way. That way. That way. Yeah. Come on, hey, kid. Hey, if you're looking for that nickel you lost a couple of months ago, you didn't lose it here. Could have been funny, Pat. The ranchers all use this road. You can't tell one track from the other. <laughs> that's good. I mean, that's bad. You better go back to that little crossroads store and get some grub. I'm going to pick up their trail if it's the last thing I do. Okay, I'll do it if this four-legged Methuselah I'm riding will get me there. <laughs> all right, Mosey, you good-for-nothing crowbait. We've got to get some food. Bob! Where 
Where have you been? Hello, Miss Evans. What's happened to Rogers? You catch those outlaws yet? No. My, my. It's been four days now. Looks like you ain't gonna get your money back. Oh, yes, I will. Bob, come into the office with me. I want to talk to you. Draw and I had something to talk over. Come on, Draw. Roy! Gee, I'm glad you're back. Any news? No. We carried home the whole countryside and always turned up with a batch of fleas. Hey, is that Bob? Yeah, he's been with that bully ever since you left, Roy. Been letting his work slide. Will you go over there and see if you can get him away from that draw, Reardon? I want to talk to him, Roy. Sure, I'll get him. But Roy told me to wait for the guard before I took the payroll to the mine. You're going to let a tin horn sheriff like that tell you what to do? Besides, anybody that can handle a gun like you, man enough to take care of himself. Yeah, sure, you bet I can. Bob. Dale's looking for you. Sam Hantley wants you to load that wagon for the mine. I will when it gets good and ready. Now, looky here. I'll handle this, Pat. Come along, Bob. No tin horn sheriff's gonna tell me what to do. Go for your gun, Rogers. You don't mean that. Uh, you're yelling just like Draw said. Why, you locoed maverick? Rico. No, you don't. Come on, Rogers. Why don't you fight like a man? When you get the B1, maybe I will. <laughs> now get on over to the post office and you can have your gun back when you cool off. I'll get even with you, Rogers. You wait and see. You know, that kid's headed for a quick grade. The next guy he draws on might take him serious. Yeah. Take it on kids, eh, Rogers? It's about your style. Here, hold this. Draw, I want you to leave that kid alone. I'm going to buy us all a yacht. Yeah, I know. Sure. Express office robbed at Linden. Post office at Holden. Say, here's a butte that the owner's willing to sacrifice for a measly $70,000. Bank at Colville, bank at Jason. Oh, hey, here's one for 50 grand. No, don't want that one. Got one sale. Mine office at Gold Town. Oh, here's one with an auxiliary engine. Come and on, we can... Pat. We've got places to go. Oh, Roy, you're taking me off the boat before I get a chance to get seasick. <laughs> Shucks. Roy, that was a good idea of yours, checking up on Draw Reardon. Yeah, but all we got was circumstantial evidence. What we need is proof. Roger. You looking for me? Yeah. 
I just want you to know I'll be waiting for you at noon in front of the post office. I'll be there. Roy, for Pete's sake, be careful. That guy's lightning on the draw. Lightning's not always fatal. It's a fine time to make a date to get yourself killed. Bob's taking the payroll up to the mine alone, and Dale's going after Bob's him. doing what? Going to the mine. He wouldn't wait for the guards. I, I tried to stop him, but he told me to mind my own business. Well, what about draw Reardon? If you ain't here to meet him, people will say you ran out. Let him. round up Draw Reardon. Draw? Yeah, he's the front man for the Lawson gang. He'd start a fight at one end of town while a gang was raiding the other. Bob, take Pat's horse and ride into town. You'll find Draw Reardon at the post office waiting for me. Roy. Tell him I have to stop by the ranch. I'll be a little late. What's the idea? I'm going to cure a bad case of hero worship for the wrong kind of man. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to go and get Rogers. I told you he was yellow. Kid, what are you doing in town? The Lawson gang held me up. You wouldn't know anything about it, would you? Me? Why, how should I know anything about it? I've been right here. Wasn't my waiting around any longer. Looks like Rogers ain't gonna show. He's coming, but he'll be just a little late. Thank you. 
Captain Jones. That was quick thinking, Bob. Looks like the county has an up-and-coming deputy. <laughs> Thanks, Sheriff. If you'd give me the keys to your jail cell, this is one guy I'd like to lock up personally. Let me give you a hand with him, Bob. I've had a lot of experience handling these tough armies like Draw Ridden. Why, it seems like it was only yesterday I was cornered by Black Jack McCleary and three of his henchmen. Well, it was a mighty black moment there for a moment. I had the situation well in hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that just about takes care of Draw Reardon and the Jake Lawson gang. And a bad case of misplaced hero worship. I hope you're right, Dale. Hi, Troy. I bet you think I'm an awful chump. Everybody makes mistakes, Bob. It's the smart ones that profit by them. That's right. Hey, Pat. I just tested this sample of ore. What'd you find out? You know, Pat, you ought to have this piece of quartz mounted. Yeah? You mean it's actually got that much gold in it, huh? No. But it'd make a swell doorstop. <laughs> 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 like to make a little wager, say, uh, 50 cents? Okay. Now, you know I don't gamble, Pat. I don't either. All right, then I'll, uh, I'll bet for both of you. Now, here we go. Now, pick. You first, Dale. But remember, if you don't find the black-eyed pea, the four bits is mine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there it is. There it is. We get the four bits, Dale. Well, I'll be frightened, snake oil, if this isn't a swindle. How come there's three black-eyed peas there when I only started with one? Well, now, we had black-eyed peas for lunch. Does that give you any ideas? Here, Pat, you better stick with this. Maybe you can prove that the hand is quicker than the fly. <laughs> Pardon me. Can anyone tell me when the next stage leaves for Red Dog? Uh, you did say Red Dog, miss? That's what I said. There must be some mistake. You can't mean Red Dog. Well, I hoped I'd made myself clear. I do want to go to Red Dog. Honey, would you mind telling me why you want to go there? I'll have you know that my father is the mayor of Red Dog. Oh, I know there's some mistake. You sit down and have a cup of coffee. Let's talk this over. But I'm in a hurry. There's no transportation to Red Dog. No transportation? But my father wrote and told me to come to Red Dog at once. 
I came all the way from Connecticut. Here, read this. I want you to come out to Red Dog and take care of my house. I'll need a hostess now that I'm there. Uh, excuse me, miss, uh, but isn't your dad a mite dub? My father is a graduate mining engineer, a brilliant man. Honey, Red Dog has been a ghost town for 50 years, ever since they worked out the gold deposit. Sure, there's nothing there but broken down buildings and abandoned mines. I can't believe it. Why would my father write and tell me to leave a good position and come all the way out here? Listen, we'll take you out to Red Dog and let you see for yourself. Have a cup of coffee while I go change. You know, Dale, that father of hers must be a strange one. Yeah. Imagine him getting her to leave a fine home to come out here and live in a ghost town. I feel sorry for her. Well, so do I. She seems to be a pretty sweet girl underneath that highfalutin manner. Yeah. Hey, Pat, you take the lead and we'll follow. Good to see you. Folks, I bid you welcome. 
My name's Peter Arnold, and I'm mayor of this town. How do you do, Your Honor? This is Dale Evans. I do, sir. I'm delighted to know you. Pat Brady. How are you? Howdy. And I'm Roy Rogers. How do you do? Dad, we were ambushed on our way here. Ambushed? I reckon it's those outlaws that have been causing me trouble. I would work for these people. Well, thank you for taking care of my little girl. Now, how about all of us adjourning to the city hall? Fine. Pat, take care of the horses, will you? City hall? I tell you, Betty, it's mighty good to have you back. Say, take a look at that sign. I painted it myself. Looks like you've been pretty busy with the paintbrush. Well, you take a look inside. After you, ladies. Boy. Well, how do you like it, folks? Well, I think it's the handsomest city hall in the whole Paradise Valley. Well, I should say. But it does need a woman's touch. Good thing you sent for Betty. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. The living quarters are upstairs. Four rooms and a Franklin stove. How do you like it, daughter? Why, I think it's fine, Father. Then how about fixing us some tea and sandwiches? You'll find the grub in the kitchen upstairs. All right. Good. I'll help you. I'll take that, Pat. Tell me about the ambush, Roy. I wish I knew more about it myself, Mayor. You see, the bushwhackers got away before we got a good look at them. You having trouble here? Yes, but I reckon I can handle it myself. What are you doing, Pat? There's a little black-eyed pea under one of these shells, Your Honor. Uh, try picking one. Well, I don't know that gambling's legal in the city hall, but as chief of police as well as mayor, I'll overlook it this time. <laughs> it's easy, ain't it? <laughs> now, wait a minute, Pat. Fun's fun, but the mayor may have something more important to tend to. Frankly, this game fascinates me. Let me see if I can do it again. All right, just one moment. <laughs> hey, this is fun. I'll bet I could pick that little black pea every time. Would you like to make a little bet? Now, Pat, never mind, Roy. We'll make just a small wager, say, uh, ten dollars. Ten dollars? Well, five, then. Well, that's better. Easy shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> you better practice a little. I just don't think I got the hang of this yet. Yes, I guess everyone down to claims office thought I was crazy when I filed to homestead this land. They said all I'd find was a lot of desert and a ghost town. Well, that suits me all right. I bet you found a gold deposit. Maybe I did and maybe I didn't. I'm not talking. But I guarantee this property will be worth a mint before long. Well, you're the mining engineer. You ought to know. Well, I guess we better be heading back to Mineral City. Yeah, I don't like to keep Nellie Bell out too late. She gets a little hard to start in the dark. <laughs> well, sorry I have to go, folks. And thanks again for taking care of my little girl. Anytime you get lonely, Betty, you come in and have dinner with us, huh? Thank you. Be pleased to see you anytime, Mayor. You know, Mayor, I'm worried about you folks. Those bushwhackers weren't fooling. Maybe they know there's a mint in this property, too. Don't worry, Roy. I've got plenty of firearms and ammunition. Thanks again, folks. Well, thank you for your hospitality. Now, take it easy, Mayor. 
Let's have the doc take a look at that shoulder. What do you figure is behind all this, Roy? I don't know, Sheriff. The mayor doesn't say much. He just claims the property is valuable. You know, he's a mining engineer. Maybe he discovered a new load. That's what he must have done. Otherwise, the outlaws wouldn't be trying to chase him away. Sheriff Blodgett? Yes? I'm looking for a little information. Well, what can I do for you? Uh, my name is John Parrish, and I represent the railroad. I'm trying to find the legal owner of that ghost town Red Dog. Well, that's mighty interesting. This here is Roy Rogers, Mr. Parrish. How do you do, sir? How do you do? What's the railroad want with Red Dog? We're figuring on running a spur there. We want to use the town as a switchyard, mainly for freight. So that's it. So that's what? That's why Red Dog became so important all of a sudden. I understand Peter Arnold filed a homestead on Red Dog, and it belongs to him. Well, there's some doubt about that. It seems that two parties filed, one of them Ned Croton. And I'm here to find the legal owner. Ned Croton, huh? Say, he's that lawyer used to practice around here. Yep, and he was disbarred after that fake mining deal he pulled. Let's take a ride out to Red Dog and see what this is all about. You better come along with us, Mr. Parrish. Peter Arnold is. 
Why? I've got business with him. Maybe he doesn't want to do any business with you. That'll be for me to decide. Now, where is he? I don't know. Oh, stop fooling. Let's get around. If that dog moves, shoot him. You're not going to shoot anybody. Pull it. Get Roy. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. You better come with us. Are you still stewing about Croton and his claim jumping? I'm more than stewing. I'm... Hi, Bullet. What's up, fella? What's the matter? Hey, Pat. Something's wrong. Have you seen Dale? Why, no. She was here a moment ago. Well, that's funny. Say, I'd say Dale's in trouble. Where's your father? He's upstairs taking a nap. Pat, you better stay here and look after Betty and her father. This might be a trick of some kind. Bullet and I'll see if we can find Dale. Come on, Bullet. You're in good hands now, Betty. <laughs> Go find Dale, Bullet. <laughs> You reckon he'll show up? He's bound to. You heard her tell the dog to go fetch him. If I know Rogers, he won't wait for a posse. That'll suit us just fine. with the wrong end of that gun. As far as I'm concerned, they're both wrong ends. Now, if that had happened to me, it would have busted these gun handles. Why, my old man used to say he could crack walnuts on my skull. And I believe it. Sure. Uh, speaking of walnuts, <coughs> Miss Betty, do you suppose you could pick out the shell that has the black-eyed pea under it? Pat, not that again. Put those things away, Pat. We've got work to do. You and I are riding out to Red, though. Well, I'm going with you. I have a score to settle, too. Well, my arm doesn't feel so bad. I'll go along. You're going to stay here. Okay. But I'll give you a tip that might prove useful to you. There's a back way leading up into that city hall. It's the shaft of an old mine. This must be it. There's the ladder. I'll go up first. Scared the death of a dog. Yeah? What are you blaming me for? Beans again? Is that all you got to eat around here? You don't like it? Fix your own grub. Now, wait a minute. There's no sense us fighting. As soon as the court gives us legal possession, we'll sell out to the railroad and get out of here. We won't have to eat beans anymore. That sounds good to me. Well, I'll tell you how it sounds to me after I hear the court's decision. Listen, I know my law. And the longer we stay here, the easier it'll be to claim possession. 
Try and get him up. You won't be in possession long. Stay right where you are, Mr. Croton. chance to use all the law you ever knew. Get going. And I want to say that I shall accept my responsibilities as mayor of this fair community seriously and earnestly. And I will give this town the type of government it is entitled to. First of all, I shall institute a police force, second to none. Friend, now here's a little game of exercise perception. The hand is quicker than the eye. Now, the idea is for you to pick the shell that has the black eye pea under it. Now, watch closely. I done it! I finally done it! Seems as though something's missing, Aloysius. What some people won't do to win a bet. Are you incinerating that I didn't use a black-eyed pea in this game? Why? Well, here it is, Mr. Brady. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. I guess that'll put an end to Pat's gambling for a while. Maybe you'd better see that we don't have black-eyed peas on the menu anymore. Yeah. <laughs> today's story. You know, Dale, I'll sure be glad when we get this fence up. Yeah, it'll put an end to all those strays you've been losing. A little farther to the right, Pat. What's the matter with him? He doesn't seem to know right from left. I can't seem to keep him in line. Hey, Pat! Don't you know right from left? Throw a rock! Oh, 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 Look, somebody's fighting over there. Yeah. You get Nella go and pick up Pat. 
I'll ride down there and see what's going on. Roy. Mr. Conway. Give me that canteen, Pat. Is he hurt bad? I don't know. There were two of them, and they gave him an awful beating. Oh. Who did this to you, Mr. Conway? Hey. Well, who are you, and what are you doing here? We're friends, Mr. Conway. It's Dale Evans and Roy Rogers. And me, oh. too, Pat Brady. Oh, of course. Of course. Well, why did they beat you up, and who were they? I, I didn't know them. They took my gold samples, and they wanted to know where I got them, but I wouldn't tell them. No, sir, I wouldn't tell them. Well, you'd know them if you were to see them again. You'd be able to identify them, wouldn't you? Of course I would. Of course I would, but why can't I see you? It ain't night already, is it? I've been lying here all this time. Oh, why don't someone make a light? Uh, I never saw it so dark before. Maybe it's just temporary. We'll get you on back to town, Mr. Conway. Yeah, that's good. Good morning, Doc. Morning. Hi, Doc. Hi, Roy. Say, where's Bullet? I haven't seen him with you lately. Oh, I loaned him to Matt Conway. He's learning to be a sea and idol. Yeah, I was going to ask old Matt over to my place until some better arrangements could be made for his care. Oh, you know he'd never stand for that kind of charity. Old Matt's made his own way alone too long. He even thinks he's going to pay us for what little we've done. He's made a big gold strike, haven't you heard? Oh, yeah. There hasn't been any gold found in these parts over 20 years. We know that. But if thinking otherwise will help old Matt to get well, it'll be worth it. And with Bullet's help, he'll get along fine. Now, if there's anything I can do, you let me know. Thanks. out of the door. You run to his side to let him know that you're there to help him off the porch. Is that it? All right, now. We'll try it. Now, I'm going to be old man. All right, now, bullet. Here comes old man. Help him off the porch. Here we go, now. That's a good boy. Nice boy. Doing fine. Where's that cotton-picking hound? What's that you say, Pat? Oh, oh nothing, Matt. I, I, I was just saying that you and Bullet are learning to get around swell. You're darn tootin' we are. Me and Bullet's got to start tromping the trails. Well, I'll be a sunburned heifer. 
You mean you and Bullet want to start looking for your diggings already? Yes, indeed, or them dry gulchers will get there for me. It's going far from there that they hijack my bag of gold. Come on, Bullet. Let's start going. That's uh, just as I suspected. Old Matt made a big strike. This ore comes from a rich vein. Well, if he has, he's sure got it well hidden. Bull and I couldn't find it. Stop looking for it. Old Matt himself is going to lead you to that mine. That is when Bullet learns to lead old Matt. Well, what's to stop Rogers or one of his pals from going along with him? Oh, they're not going to do that. They're too interested in humoring the old man. See, he wants to be independent. Well, what if they find out what we know? What if he tells them? Well, they'll be polite. They'll listen. You mean they think the old man's cracked? No, they think he's living in an old prospector's dream. And it's just as good they keep on thinking that. Now, you take the back way out, Abilene. This is where we turn off, Bullet. I, I, I'm middling sure of it. Hello, boy, Matt. You're doing fine. Ah, hello, Mr. Roy. Well, I think it's about time you got back. I have your lunch ready. Thank you, Miss Dale. I really worked me up an appetite. <laughs> he and Bullock can sure find their way around in these hills now. Well, good for you, Matt. Thank you. Here you are, Matt. Just sit down right over here. Mm. Make yourself nice and comfortable. Oh, thank you. There you are. Bullet, where are my slippers? That's a boy, that's a boy. Roy. I, I don't know how I'll ever be able to thank you good folks for all you've done for me. Forget it, Matt. You don't need to. No, you better hear me out. You know, I got me a rich gold mine. I ain't going to say anything about it now, but someday I'm going to leave that mine to you, Mr. Roy, and you, Miss Dale, and to Mr. Pat, too. Oh, Matt, we won't even talk about that. You just put those slippers on and you relax. And Roy and I'll be right back. Thank you, Miss Dale. How's he doing? He's getting along fine. Oh, that's wonderful. Did you make him promise to stay away from that cliff trail? Well, I tried, but he still claims he's got a mine on the other side. And he's bound and determined he's going to find it alone. Roy, we can't let him go alone. I don't intend to, until I'm sure he can navigate that trail without getting hurt. Well, you'll have to be careful. We mustn't let him think we're trying to spy on him. You're right. I'll see to that. <laughs> Like he's using the dog to lead him to his mine. Yeah, Doc Harrington was right. You keep my back trail covered. I'm going to see where the old man goes.
it's not so bad. You're going to be all right, which is a lot more than you deserve. Get on your horse. done to you. Matt. Where's Matt? Well, he got a pretty bad blow on the head. There's a concussion, but I think he'll eventually be all right. Do you have any idea how soon? Oh, well, that's hard to say. You leave him with me. I'll take good care of him. I know you will, Doc. So you caught one of the two men who were after Matt Conway, huh? Yeah, I brought him in and turned him over to the sheriff. Know who he is? No, I never seen him before. Has he talked? No, oh, he's wounded pretty bad. They've got him in the emergency hospital. Oh, no, Matt Conway is dead, huh? I'll and... check with you later, Doc. Yeah, don't worry about Bullet Roy. I'll take care of him like he was my very own. Thanks. That's just our luck. The old man was on his way to the mine with that dog, I'm sure of it, when he had to fall over the cliff and kill himself. Now, you were fools to take the chance you did. At least we've got Bullet. Yeah, he's a killer. You ought to put him out of the way. Rogers would never know the difference. Don't be stupid all of your life, Abilene. That dog's gonna lead us to the mine. He'll kill you. You can't control him. I can control him. I've known him since he was a pup. Well, all right, but I don't like it. And if he jumps me again, I'm gonna let him have it for keeps this time. You don't have to be around when I bring him out of it. Why don't you get over to Matt's shack? Yeah, I guess we will have to start from there. Yeah, take an extra horse with you. I'll meet you there. Meantime, I got something else to tend to. What are you gonna do with that thing? That's for your partner, Bull. He's still alive and he might be persuaded to talk. You can't get away with that. Don't worry, I'll handle it. No one will suspect a thing. Okay, Doc, you're the boss. fell to his death, but the way it happened, he might just as well have been pushed. In my book, it's murder. Poor old guy was just like a kid. With a bullet there to help him, he got along fine. I wonder if he had any folks. Oh, he must have, back east or someplace. They ought to be notified. Where are you going? I'm going to ride out there and see if I can find a letter or something. That might not be a bad idea. Don't you worry about bullet. Doc Harrington will pull him through. That's right. Old Doc, he's, he's the salt of the earth. Pat will stick around town and check with him later. Come on, 
Hold your horses, Doc. That killer's got it in for me. He can't hurt. She's on a lead and still groggy. Just the same, I ain't taking any chances. Come on, open up. Now, take it easy. Now, open it yourself. Dog, he tried to kill me. Oh, you must be the one that hurt Bullock. The one that's responsible for what happened to poor old Matt Conway. I'm not going to hang alone, Doc. I'm sorry, Miss Dale. What is this? He won't be back for a couple of hours. Let's try the back door. Roy, ain't that slightly sort of against the law? Well, Pat, Doc Carrington won't mind. He's probably out on the call. I want to see how Bullet is. Bullet? Bullet? Well, he's gone. Sure looks like it. Hey, Roy. Ore samples. What's Doc Carrington doing with ore samples? I didn't know he was prospecting. He isn't. You know, Pat, old Matt said those two men who attacked him the first time took his bag of ore samples away from him. We thought he was still out of his head, remember? Yeah, we figured they bushwhacked him just for his pocket money. This was beginning to add up to something. Oh, it can't be Doc Harrington. He's not in on this. Listen, I'm going to question that killer I brought in, no matter how seriously he's wounded. If the girl's lying and can't lead us to the mine, we can always come back and get the dog. Bullet! Get Roy! Get Roy, Bullet! Shut up! Take it easy, Emily. That dog's locked up and tied in. He can't get the Rogers. I'm going to make sure of that. Give me the key. Go on, Doc. Give it to him. It'll look pretty bad for you, though, when Roy finds out his dog has been shot. She's right, Adelina. Roger's left that dog in my care. If he's found shot to death, it'll tie me right in with this deal. Maybe you're right. Go get her horse. <laughs> a few questions. But he can't talk. He's dead. What? When? I just discovered it. He was died a while ago. I can't understand it. Where's the doc? I called him. He's on his way. Thanks. Hey, hey, what's the rush? What's on your mind? Plenty. Dale, Bullet, Doc Harrington, a sack of stolen ore, and a man who just died very mysteriously. <laughs> Not so fast, Roy. I'm all discombobulated. Look, Pat, that sack of ore in Harrington's office links him with the killer. And he could be using Bullet to lead him to that lost money. Well, what's all this got to do with what we saw in there? I'll explain later. Dale headed for Conway's shack. Let's just hope she hasn't met up with that killer. See you, Bullet, but calm down. Take it easy. Hey, you don't suppose Dale sent Bullet to get us? That's what we're going to find out. Well, wait. That's not the way to Matt's cabin. Bullet's headed for Maverick Valley. Well, the trail from Matt's cabin to his mine runs through Maverick Valley. Come on. <laughs> Now, 
far is this mine? It's about four miles up that ravine, and it gets rougher, too rough to ride. Uh, we'll leave the horses here and go the rest of the way on foot. This better be on the level, sister. That's all I got to say. Pat, we better leave Nellie Bell and Trigger here so we can sneak up on them. Where's the escalator? taking them to Matt Conway's mine. But you don't know where that mine is. Neither did Bullet. But I couldn't tell Doc that. I had to send Bullet to get you and Pat. Hey, where is Pat? to go, so let's get started with today's story. My, but it's good to be home again, Roy. Yeah, it sure is, but it's sure tough luck on poor Roy to be coming home to such a problem. What problem? What are you going to do with all these rodeo prizes you got here? The, the man was full of trophies now. Oh, Pat. Roy, 
I look. I am looking. And I still can't believe it. Well, how do, ma'am? Can we give you a lift? That's mighty kind of you. I'm Dale Evans, and this is Roy Rogers, and that's Pat Brady. How do you do, ma'am? Oh, it's a real pleasure to meet you. I'm Abigail Connolly, but everybody calls me Grandma. Well, where are you heading, Grandma? I don't rightly know. I came out to visit with Willie. He's my grandson. I got a letter with a postmark, Mineral City, from him. But he wasn't in town. Well, didn't anyone know of his whereabouts? Somebody said he might live down the road a piece. But I didn't realize the pieces were so large here in the West. <laughs> well, you can just stay at my house until you find your grandson. Well, mine's closer. We can start telephoning from here. No, I don't want to put you youngsters to so much trouble. Oh, it ain't no trouble, Grandma. Chuck, this is a pleasure. You know, it ain't often that I get a chance to, to escort such a fair damsel as you. <laughs> Come on, this way. I don't see why Johnny didn't mark the spot where he buried the can. We could be standing on it for all we know. Yeah, and if he hadn't died before he got out of prison, we would be guessing where he hid it. A fortune right under our feet, and we're worrying how we're going to eat. Hey, here comes Art and Mike. Here, pick us up on that rock and keep an eye out. We don't want any strangers catching us digging. Go on. Okay. How much did you get? A bullet crease in the arm and a murder rap against us. A murder rap? Well, the teller opened fire before we could get our hands on the dough, and I cut him down. We risk losing a hundred grand just to get eaten money, and what happens? You botched the job. How did we know the teller would go for his gun? Anybody trade you? Don't worry, it was a clean job. Yeah, we doubled back on our tracks often. We almost got lost ourselves. All right, but keep your mouth shut. The kid up on the rock still thinks this treasure hunt is on the level. You better get rid of your masks and guns. Right. Grandma. Hey, hey, Gil. My grandma's coming with two fellows and a dame. Your grandma? Yeah. Your grandma? Yeah. Did you tell her where you were? No, I never told her nothing. I only sent her a pretty picture postcard, that's all. You two get into the ring and start boxing quick. All right, you go get the equipment. Don't you worry none, Grandma. Roy will find your Willie, because he's a one-man viewer of missing person. Is that so, Mr. Brady? Mr. Brady? Mr. Brady. <laughs> Look, what's that? Well, I don't know. It wasn't here when we left. There's my Willie! Yo! Willie! Yo! Willie! Grandma! Hiya, oh, Grandma. How's my girl, huh? Oh, Willie, I thought I never would find you. Howdy. Hello. Hi. Visitors aren't usually allowed, but any friends of the killer are welcome. Well, that's mighty big of you, fella. Mighty big. Oh, that's okay. Seeing as how you're squatting on Roy Rogers' ranch. And this is Roy Rogers. Rogers? Well, oh, that's news to me. I didn't see any sign. Of course, I'll be glad to pay you, Mr. Rogers. Well, that won't be necessary. Grandma, I want you to meet Art Golly and Mike Fuller, my trainer and sparring partner. I'm certainly glad to meet Willie's friend. How to do? Howdy, howdy. So this is a training camp, huh? Yeah. Would you folks like me to show you around the camp? No, thanks. I was just wondering why you pitched your camp so far from water. I didn't know there was any around. I mean, the boys have been digging for it. Yeah, there's a stream about a quarter of a mile due south of here. Oh. Oh, 
Hi, Sheriff. Hi, Roy. But Grandma, Roy doesn't want you to work. I know. But just because he's kind enough to let me stay near my Willie, I don't intend to sit down on him. Besides, I'm going to earn my board and keep. Oh, I didn't know you had come. <laughs> That's all right, Grandma. I'd like you to meet our sheriff, Jim Wiley. This is Mrs. Conley, Killer Conley's grandma. Glad to know you, ma'am. Oh, you're not the sheriff who arrested my Willie, are you? Arrested him? Why, well, no. Willie wrote he was the nicest man. He said he fixed it, so Willie only got two years. Oh, Roy, you don't suppose he... Hey, Grandma, what was Willie arrested for? Was it, uh, for stealing? Land sakes, no. It was only assault and battery. Willie didn't mean to hit the man so hard. He just doesn't know how strong he is. But Willie must be a pretty good guy. We better get started, Sheriff. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been a pleasure to have met you, ma'am. Bye, Jim. Bye, Dale. Goodbye, Mr. Wiley. Bye. Oh, he reminds me so much of my brother, Abner. Handsomest man in the family, Abner was. <laughs> A great old lady, Grandma. Yeah. You better untie yourself from her apron strings and see if you can find out who Conley's partners are. They could have been his cellmates. Ooh. You know, Roy, old Willie never learned that fancy footwork boy in the pen. You know, I sure wish I could fight like him. You do? Yes, I sure do, Roy. Just... Oh, mm. Mm. Okay. You're going to take lessons from the killer. Boy, that's sure swell, Roy. Now, who, me? Sure, they can't very well refuse as long as they're on my property. Now, you get over there and keep your eyes open. Come on, Bullet. <laughs> oh, Roy! Keep my eyes open. I could pop to the left, and Conley will pop me with the right. I'll have a little trouble keeping my eyes open. You look warm enough, Brady. Let's go, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I put these on. Yeah, put these on. Give me these. What'd you let Brady stay for? Yeah, we can't do no digging with him around. We're supposed to be a training camp, and we're going to act like one. Besides, this won't take long. Not bad, eh? <laughs> Boy, they just call me Muscles Brady. Muscles Brady. Quiet. Well, how about some action? I'm raring to go. Okay, you hit me, huh? All right, just as you say, but watch yourself, because sometimes I don't even know my own strength. Ah, ah, ah. That guy can't even punch his way out of a paper bag. Shut up. Hey, where are you? Over here. Oh, howdy. This could go on all day. Now look, uh, keep your button in, huh? What button? Here, button, keep it in. Oh, oh! Oh, uh, now wait a minute, wait a minute. Lead with your left and cross with your right, like this. Hey, Bill, just a minute. All right, keep on practicing. Rock him to sleep, we haven't got any time to lose. Yeah, but that ain't fair, he's just learning. You want your dough, don't you? Oh, okay. All right, Brit, let's do some sparring, huh? Now remember to block my punch. Uh, don't you forget to block mine. Okay, let's go. Bill Stalin. You know what to do. Hey, Brady. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I could have knocked him out without you doing that. Never mind, Brady. We got some digging to do. Come on.
How far down did Johnny hide the stuff anyway? As far as a man can go with nothing but a knife, his bare hands, and a posse on his trail. Hey, Brady's coming around. What do I do? Knock him out again. Hey, break it up! Hey, Rogers and the sheriff are coming. The sheriff? Bring Brady around fast. heading for the camp. Maybe your hunch was right, Roy. Maybe not. He might be leading us to Pat. Won't hurt to look around. Come on, pal. Come out of it, huh? What a fight. I didn't think he could do it. This fellow's terrific. He stayed six rounds with a chance. I did? You certainly did. Well, gosh darn, I'm better than I thought I was. <laughs> better help him into his clothes, Bill. We've got to take good care of this boy. we got a real champ in him. Meet Sheriff Wiley, Mr. Tolan. Tolan? He's on the trail of some bank robbers. Bank robbers? Yeah. You happen to see a couple of men riding in this direction? Yeah, come to think of it, I did. But I thought they were just a couple of Mr. Rogers' ranch hands. Oh? Yeah. Last time I saw them, they were heading in the general direction of town. Well, I'd better be getting back. Maybe they'll make another try at the bank. Oh, oh, hey, did you hear? I stayed six rounds with the champ. Well, a couple of times I had him hanging in the ropes. Are you sure about that, Pat? <laughs> sure, I'm sure. Well, at least I, I made a few passes at him, and then something hit me, and that's all I remember. But confidentially, Roy, he's a coward. He wouldn't come down on the canvas and fight me like a man. <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, Hey, I'll bet you're a good fighter. Yeah, I used to take on all comers. But I never lost a fight, either. Well, a real picnic, huh? Mm -hmm. You look pretty husky, Mr. Rogers. But I'll bet you 50 bucks you can't stay three rounds with a champ. Yeah, how about it, Mr. Rogers? Well, I'm not a betting man, but... How about you, Mr. Brady? You did it once. Think you can do it again? You're dead gum tootin'. And I got the 50 bucks here to prove it. I always thought you were a sporting man. Looks like I made a bad bet. Bill, fix Mr. Brady up here with a pair of gloves. I sure will. Oh, on second thought, I'll take a try at the champ. Well, look here, Roy. You had your chance, Pat. I just want to see if I'm as good as you are. Oh, well, then, that's different. The champ will be glad to oblige. What'll we use to pay off as Rogers wins? He ain't no pushover. Oh, forget it. Tommy will lay him out like a rug. He wasn't the prison champ for nothing, you know. Hey, uh, Brady, you can be a second. Okay, Willie. What's got into you, Roy? Well, he told you. He wants to see if he's as good as me. Not quiet. I'm going to hold their attention while Pat searches the camp. Search the camp? What for? I believe the robbers that held up the bank came from here. See if you can find anything that'll tie him in with the robbery. Mr. Rogers too much, is he?
Don't worry about Roy, Grandma. Roy can take care of himself. The Rogers ain't bad, though. Not too hard, Willie. Really. Hey, did you see that? Give him that left, Roy. Come on. Get in there, Roy. That's a boy. With a lucky punch? A lucky punch, nothing. He was framed. That guy over there called him. Feeling any better? Well, I finally got my jaw to working. Well, that's what you get for fighting. They pulled the same trick on you as they did on me. Never mind that. Did you find anything? I'll see, I did. I found these in an old trunk along with this. And I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out to be the one used on that bank teller. Nice work, Pat. I'll notify the sheriff. The sheriff phoned to say that Tolan, Fuller, and Golly were released from prison the same time Conley was. They were in for robbery. Listen, Pat. Take these to the sheriff and bring him back to the camp as quick as you can. Okay. Where are you going? I still have to find out what they were digging for. Roy. I'd like to speak to you a minute. Yes? I just want to tell you, Willie didn't mean to hit you so hard. <laughs> well, that's all right, Grandma. No, it ain't all right. Those men are up to something. Willie said he just went in with them because they promised him enough to help us to get a place where he could settle down. I don't want anything that isn't bought with honest money. For oh, Roy, if he's doing anything wrong, please make him stop. <laughs> I'll do everything I can, Grandma. Yeah. Ah, he's here just like Johnny said. You stay here with Trigger. Look at that. Hey, Gil. Gone. Gone? They can't be. Hey, what's the idea of the shooting iron? Oh, it's you, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> we thought you were one of those bank robbers. What can we do for you? I'd like another try at the champ and that 50 bucks I lost. Okay. All right, fix Mr. Rogers up with a pair of gloves. You better get him a pair of shoes, too. It'll be a pleasure. Step right this way, Mr. Rogers. Knock him out quick. We got to get out of here. As soon as Bill KO's Rogers, you finish him off and make it look like the champ did it. That'll give the law something else to worry about besides us. Jim, 
right, right. I'm all right, Grandma. This is the loot from the Houston jewelry store. Johnny Hayes buried it when he saw he couldn't get away. They never told me that. Grandma, all they said was they knew where a hundred grand was buried. That's no excuse, Willie. You knew they were up to something. Sheriff, if he's done anything wrong, I want him to take his medicine. He helped us catch those robbers. Yes, and he didn't know anything about these jewels. Or the trial in the bank. Well, I've got to do my duty as I see it. And if I catch you keeping bad company again, I'll throw you in the clink. Well, you won't, Sheriff. I'm going to go back to fighting. And I'm going to be his manager. You're wonderful, Grandma. That's great, Willie. I'm going to be a fighter, too. You know, Roy, if I practice hard enough, maybe I'll get to be a champ. That could be, Pat. You know, we can all be champions at something if we just keep at it and don't throw in the sponge. That's right, Roy. Never throw in the sponge. Don't throw in the sponge. You give him a left and then a right. Hey, Pat. You're a sucker for a jab. The first thing you've got to learn is how to duck and weave. Yeah? Now, come here, I'll show you. All right. Throw a few punches at me. <laughs> eh? Yeah, now, that's it. <laughs> now, you got the idea? Yeah, sure. I'll tell you what. Now, you throw some punches at me. All right. <laughs> that's it. Oh, Pat. Oh, I'm sorry, Pat. I didn't mean to hit you. That was an accident. Willie! <laughs> you better get the sponge, Dale. You shouldn't have turned your head. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Happy trails to you till we meet
with Pat Brady, his comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. Well, riders, trigger here is raring to go, so let's get started with today's story. Yeah, I think this box will fit right here in the back seat, Dale. Yep. Now, you think we have everything? Yeah, I think so. Excuse me. I'm John Carter, attorney. Well, how do you do, Mr. Carter? I'm very glad to meet you. I'm Pat Brady, and this is Dale Evans. How do you do, sir? How do you do? I'm looking for someone to act as a witness to my client's last will and testament. Uh, would you be so good, Miss Evans? You see, Mr. Perry is a stranger in town, and he hasn't long to live. Oh, I'd be glad to, Mr. Carter. Excuse me, Pat. I just moved in. All my furniture hasn't arrived. <sighs> Miss Evans, this is Mr. Perry. How do you do, sir? Miss Evans has kindly consented to act as a witness. This is so kind of you. <coughs> Please be seated. Okay. As you see, it is time I put my affairs in order. If you'll sign first, Mr. Perry. <coughs> Now you, Miss Evans. You just sign on the bottom line, please. You don't know how much I appreciate this. Not at all, Mr. Perry. And I do hope you'll soon recover your health. Thank you. Thank you again, Miss Evans. Good day. Thanks for the 30,000 bucks. Now all we have to do is to remove the top sheet of paper and we have Miss Dale Evans' name on a legal bill of sale. <laughs> <laughs> $30,000. Bought your ranch? Yes, he has a bill of sale with my name on it. But I didn't sign it. It's forged. You know I wouldn't sell my ranch for twice that amount. Here he comes now. Talk to him, will you, Roy? I certainly will. Mr. Colby, I'm Roy Rogers. I don't care who you are. I bought her ranch fair and square, cash on the barrel head. May I see the bill of sale? You may. The whole world can see it. Open and above board. That's the way I do business. Nobody's tricked Lewis C. Colby yet, and they aren't going to. The deal's closed, young lady, and it's too late now for you to change your mind. How can I change my mind when I never made it up in the first place? Dale, sign your name on this piece of paper. I certainly will. There. Well, they sure look the same. They are the same. What did I tell you? Roy, they can't be the same because I never signed that bill of sale. Have you signed anything lately? Nothing except my own checks. Mm, there was that last will and testament, that fellow that was dying. Oh, that was weeks ago, Pat. Who was it? A man named Perry. Mr. Carter asked me to witness his signature to his last will and testament. Who's Carter? He's a new lawyer in Mineral City. Did Carter handle this deal for you? Nope. Benson, a real estate agent in town. I never heard of either one of them. I want to take a ride into town. Oh, wait, I'll go with you. You'll have to ride horseback because I'm taking a shortcut. All right. I'll ride. Hey, Pat, get Mr. Colby a horse, will you? <laughs> Dale, where is this Carter's office? Right over here, Roy. This. His sign's gone. This was it. That's funny. 
morning. Mr. Coleman, what's that real estate agent's office? Right over there. Why, he's moved. It was right here. Looks like you've both been taken by a couple of confidence men. Why? Confidence men? Dale, you actually signed the bill of sale for your ranch. And this Mr. Carter, or Perry, posing as Benson, sold the ranch to Mr. Colby and skipped with the money. That don't make any difference. This bill of sale is legal and it's been recorded. I can't help it if it has been recorded. If you think you... Well, Roy, what are we going to do? If we're going to clear your ranch, we've got to find those men and get Mr. Colby's $30,000 back. Did you catch up to him, Roy? No, but looks like we're on the trail of a couple of confidence men. Confidence men? Huh. Now, Lavelle never had any confidence in men. Only me. <laughs> Here are your credentials. You think it'd be safe for Carl if I, uh, if I wore a mustache or a beard or something? That's the trouble with you amateurs. You think that a disguise consists of false whiskers and glasses. All you have to do is to think yourself into your part. Always remember that people accept a man on his own terms. You are not Todd Willis. You're George Orman, working for the United States Treasury. You're here on special assignment. You have the whole federal government in back of you. You are quiet polite and efficient. Now, who are you? George Orman, Treasury Department. Here are my credentials. Good. Who's coming? It's Leo. Hey, Carl. The roundup's over and the extra hands are getting paid off Saturday. In cash? Well, that's what the cook said. Fine. You better get back now before someone misses you. And remember what I told you. Don't worry. I'll be there to put up a squawk when I don't get my dough. Todd, come here. What's this for? How many times do I have to tell you not to rely on one disguise? Always keep an ace in the hole. Excuse me. I'm George Orman, Treasury Department, and I've been on a trail of a gang of counterfeiters. Counterfeiters? I uh, wonder if you'd mind letting me take a look at those bills. Why, mm, no, but I just got them in the bank. Well, this gang's been passing the money through the bank. They're so good they'd fool anyone but an expert. I'm using this as my temporary headquarters. I wonder if you'd come along with me. I'll just take this money in the back room and make a few tests. Well, take care of that money, because it don't belong to me. Don't worry. I'll guard it like it was my own. What'd the sheriff say? He's put up roadblocks, like you suggested. But he said all the strangers in town have been properly identified. Including you? You're a stranger, too, you know. Now, see here, young lady. Mr. Colby's OK, Dale. I checked on him. Well, of all the nerve. Well, if you don't like what Roy's doing, why don't you leave us alone? No, sir. I'm sticking with you till I get my money or the ranch. Hey, I told Pat to wait here for me. Maybe he's over at the livery stable. Uh, hold on to that money, Mr. Orman. I'll be right back. Hey, Pat. Roy? Roy? There's a man from the Treasury Department looking at your money to see if it's counterfeit. Counterfeit? Where is he? Well, he's in that office where that fake real estate man used to hang out. He's in there. Uh, maybe you better not bother him yet. Oh. Where you gone? I've been took. Or, I mean, you've been took. What'd he look like? Oh, he was kind of tall and dark and had a brownish suit on. Well, let's get her out and find him. You dumbbell. When you had your hands on him, why didn't you grab him? Why, you...
Did you see a man go by, tall, dark, wearing a brown suit? No, but I didn't see no one. I'm just a janitor here. Any sign of him? Not yet. Well, I'll take a look in that old Keene building. I talked to the janitor there. He said he hadn't seen anyone. Janitor? Well, that place has been vacant for two years. Who's that dumbbell now? Dude. Pat, you and Dale see if you can open this door. Well, don't just stand there. Come on, Mr. Colby. Hurry up, Carl. They work in pairs. Come on, Pat, let's get after that wagon. Looks like this is a job for a bullet. Well, by the time we get back here with him, it'll be too dark. I'll start the first thing in the morning. Besides, there's plenty of dough here, and we haven't even scratched the surface. Yeah, but what about Roger? Much as I regret violence, he'll have to be eliminated. I'll take care of him. No, you've worked for him. Someone might recognize you. Besides, Todd's a better shot. I'll go do it now. Oh, sure. Now rush right out and stick your head into a noose. How many times do I have to tell you to first make sure you're in the clear, no matter what happens? Yeah, but how am I going to do him in if I don't shoot him? Remember what I said about that ace in the hole? You're going to shoot him all right, but you're going to do it legal. Now, the first thing you do is to get into Leo's clothes. Then you go into town and see the sheriff. Here, tell him your name is Fraser. This is where they left the white. a prisoner. You can book him on attempted murder of me. There must be some mistake, Roy. This here is Mr. Fraser, a detective. Detective? My credentials are in this pocket. I'm sorry I took a shot at you. I thought you were one of a gang of confidence men that I've been after. Sure. He came in late last night looking for him. They're wanted in Houston for an insurance fraud. What made you think I was one of the gang? I have a report in this pocket. The description of their leader exactly fits you. Now, if you'll get me out of this harness, Oh, oh, of course. Certainly, certainly. Yes, sir. Awful sorry about this, Mr. Fraser. 
So am I. I might have shot the wrong man. Where are you staying? In the hotel. And with your permission, I'd like to go and clean up. Go ahead. Oh, uh, if you hear any word about those crooks, Sheriff, you let me know. I sure will. Good day, gentlemen. Did you check his credentials with the agency? I, uh, did, did, well, 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 yeah, sure, of course I did. Yeah, I called Alice right away. He's working out of that office. I see. Well, I better head back to the ranch. Hello. Hello. Get me the Brighton Detective Agency in Dallas and step on it. Pat, you better see if you can find Roy. He should know this. Well, he's only been gone a couple of hours. Well, here he is now. Roy! Roy, the sheriff just phoned. He said the description of the real Fraser doesn't... doesn't fit the fellow I brought in. Well, he also said the man left the hotel without... Without paying his bill, I know. How did you know? Deduction, Dale. Deduction. <laughs> no, I checked. Well, there must be some way to catch these crooks. There is, Pat, but the oldest trick in the world. What's that? Let's go inside. I'm going to call the Mineral City News and plant a story. Hey, Carl, talk. It's Leo. Something's up. Take a look at this. Gold has been discovered on the rocking E by Mr. Lewis C. Colby, new owner of the ranch, recently the property of Miss Dale Evans. How about it, Carl? How should we move in? We don't. That's the oldest trick in the world. I can smell the trap from here. It is reported that Miss Evans is threatening to sue, claiming that not only was the ranch obtained by fraud, but that in the sale no release of mineral rights was included. Let me see that. Hmm, I could be wrong. That piece about Dale Evans sounds genuine. Get me that dude outfit out of the suitcase. Horseback. Looks like they've taken the bait. You know what to do, Mr. Colby. Leave it to me. I took the lead in all the plays. A high school, that is. Good. Come on, Dale. Duck down. You are Mr. Colby, I take it? If you're one of Dale's snooping lawyers, you can get right off this property. I'm not a lawyer, Mr. Colby. I'm a financier. For my card, sir. Arthur Graham, Wall Street. Not the big multimillionaire. I've been blessed with good fortune, sir, and a head for business. Oh, my friend uh, Walter Howard and I are here on a hunting trip, but I always find time for a good investment. Uh, if you're talking about my mine, it isn't for sale. Oh, I'm not interested in buying it, Mr. Colby. But you will need money to operate it, and that's where I come in. Uh, come to think of it, I can't very well finance it alone. Good. However, this is hardly the place to talk business. Suppose you come with me over to my cabin and meet my friend Howard. As my attorney, he can advise us on what steps are to be taken. Well, all right, if I do go in on this with you, and I haven't said I will, it's got to be on a 50-50 basis. Oh, I'm sure we can come to terms on an agreement, Mr. like the man that got me to sign that paper. Yeah, me too. Let's get our horses and follow them.
We can't lose Mr. Colby. This way. and meet my friend. Hello, Walter. Been waiting long? No, Arthur. I just got here. Mr. Colby, this is Mr. Walter Howard. How do you do, sir? How do you do? The contract's all ready for you. Just sit here. Keep a sharp lookout, Bill. You stay here. You understand, of course, this is only a temporary agreement. We'll sign a permanent partnership later. Uh, isn't that right, Howard? That's right, Arthur. You can sign on this bottom line. I wouldn't if I were you. Nice work, Mr. Colby. Back up. Hand me that contract, Mr. Colby. Take it along as evidence. You won't be needed, Rogers. As I have so often said, always keep an ace in the hole. My sentiments exactly. Leo, get his guns. All right, reach for the sky or I'll blast you. Looks like Rogers trumped your ace, Mr. Saunders. <laughs> glad to get that fake bill of sale back. You're not nearly as glad as I was to get my money back. <laughs> Crooks never get to keep what they steal. It's only the honest money that stays in a man's pocket. That's for sure. Hey, what does Pat think he's doing over here? Oh, Pat thinks that since I bought the ranch next to yours, Roy, I ought to learn to be a real cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Pat. How are you doing, Pat? Oh, hi, folks. Well, Mr. Colby, it's just like I've been telling you. There's really nothing to it. You just uh, back off, see, and take a running start, and you hit that bottom stirrup, then your other foot hits this other stirrup, and then you're right up in the saddle. But, Pat, I'm getting too old for that kind of stuff. Oh, shucks, it's just as easy as falling off a log. Now, I'll show you. Now, here's the way it goes. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> you better stick to Nellie Bell. No true words were ever spoken, Roy. Me and my cotton. Picking ideas. What happened? It worked before. <laughs> <laughs> Trails to you till we meet 
So let's get started with today's story. Don't see why you can't ride right up to the front door in style. We're taking a shortcut. We've been cooped up so long we both need the exercise. I saddle trigger the last stop back and he's raring to go. <laughs> really feeling his oath, huh? Yeah. He seems to know we're getting close to home. He's some horse. Yes, he is. It was a great tour. I wish we were just starting out. It was a lot of fun, but I'm glad to be home. Let's go, Trigger. Easy. I was anxious to get home as he is. <laughs> See you back at the ranch, Mac. So long, Roy. Take it easy now. You bet. has got you a little out of condition. You like that exercise, Trigger? Yeah, that sounds like trouble. Let's take a look. man? Bill Jenkins. Who plugged him? Four masked riders, but they got away. Is he dead? Yes. Do you know anyone around here who'd want to gun him down? 
Well, no. He just come here from Oklahoma. He took over this place when old Jeremiah died. And I just brought some stuff to his wife for Dale. His wife? Yeah. Mrs. Jenkins. Dale. Easy, yeah. ma'am. It's all right. You're oh. with friends. Pat, bring the oh. jeep around. We have to get her to the doctor. Oh. Hi, Pat. Hi, Roy. How's Miss Jenkins? Not so good. She's lost a lot of blood, and that bullet in her shoulder's giving Dr. Moss a lot of trouble. Is Dale around? She's in there helping the doc. Oh, here she is. Pat, the doctor wants some hot water. All right. How is she, Dale? Will she pull through? Well, the doctor won't say. But he's going to stay with her until she recovers consciousness. How long have you known the Jenkins? Not too long. Why? I was just wondering why anybody would want to chase them off of their land. Well, I can explain that. They live in Lost Valley. Well, what's that got to do with it? There's only a few farmers and homesteaders there. Not anymore. The Jenkins were the only ones left. All the rest have been burned out or scared off. It sure doesn't make sense to me. There's nothing out there of any value. I tell you, I know what I'm talking about, Sheriff. They're out to ruin us, and you're doing nothing to protect us. Absolutely nothing. How long do you expect this to go on? As I've told you before, Mrs. Clinton, I can't be in two places at once. Have you got any ideas? I'm open to any suggestions. Oh, hello, Roy. Hi, Sheriff. Glad to see you back. Hi, Dale. Hello, Sheriff. Where's Mrs. Jenkins? She's in there with the doctor. How is she? Still unconscious. I want to have a talk with her. Oh, Mrs. Jenkins is unconscious. Now Sheriff wants to talk to her. What's he expect to do? Read her mind? What do you expect from him? Now, just a minute, folks. I don't know you, but I do know the Sheriff, and he always does his best. Roy, this is Mr. and Mrs. Clinton. They've taken over the bank. This is Roy Rogers. He owns the Double R Bar Ranch. How do you do? I do. Hello, Mr. Rogers. We've heard about you. You've been away, haven't you? Yes, I have. Well, now that you're back, I think we'd better get together for our mutual protection. Protection? From what? What, from that gang of terrorists that have been operating around here? Do you have any idea who they might be? Not the slightest. They seem to know just when one of the farmers gets a big loan from our bank. Yes, and then they scare them out or burn them out. And now with Jenkins gone, we're stuck with all of Lost Valley. If the townspeople ever knew how low we were on funds, why, there'd be a run on the bank. I appreciate your problem, and we'll try to get to the bottom of it. Mineral City. I wish I'd never heard of the place. And we came here believing it to be a law-abiding community. Come on, Owen. Pleasant people. I'll bet the citizens of Mineral City are sure happy that they're running the bank. Yeah. I happened to overhear the last part of that conversation, and I tell you, that woman's been driving me crazy. Well, never mind about her, Sheriff. Tell them about what Miss Jenkins said. Oh, well, she come to just long enough to say, Jamie. Jamie? That's her son. What'd you do with him? We didn't even see him. That's right. And if Jamie was in that cabin, he wouldn't have a chance. I'll go see. I'll go with you. Pat, look after things while I'm gone, will you? Take a look after yourself. Well, I'm going too. Sheriff. Worried? Yes, I am. I hadn't planned on killing him. We couldn't stall Jenkins any longer. But the murdering a whole family, it isn't worth it. It is to me. Clay, when you're free, will you come into the office? Yes, Mrs. Clinton. Wonder where Rogers and the Sheriff were going in such a hurry. I haven't the slightest idea. Well, I have. Probably headed straight for the Jenkins house. Oh, stop worrying, Owen. Look, now we've got all of Lost Valley. All we've got to do is sit tight for a few weeks. Then when the property's recorded in our names, we'll accidentally discover Jenkins' oil strike. Yeah. And then we'll be fixed for life. Come in. You want to see me, Mrs. Clinton? That horse of yours threw a shoe during the Jenkins raid. I know. Milo took him to the blacksmith's. Well, apparently you don't understand. Roy Rogers is back in town. He's out to get the killer Jenkins, and those tracks are leading right straight to our barn. Roy Rogers, huh? What do you want me to do about it? Take the boys and backtrack. If Rogers gets too close, discourage him. A pleasure, Mrs. Clinton. Sheriff, 
You and Pat search the house for Jamie. Dale and I will take the yard and that old shack over there. All right. Come on, Pat. He couldn't have been at the neighbors. The Jenkins were the only folks left in the valley. <laughs> All right, bullet, let's see what's in there. Get back, get back! Let me go! Let me go! Jamie, darling, get back. Let me go! No one's going to hurt you, dear. I want my mama! Where's my mama? Somebody took you away. Listen, son, there's been trouble. Big trouble. We need your help. What do you want me to do? Tell me, how long have you been hiding in here? Since the shooting. That once, when I went out to look for mama and daddy. Just before you came. I'm going to take Jamie back to town with me. All right. Listen, Jamie, I've got some things to take care of. You go with Miss Dale and look after her until I get back. All right. That's the stuff. Pat, have you any idea what's wrong? <laughs> I don't know. I checked the carburetor. I checked the distributor. I checked the points. I checked the coil. Never mind the inventory. I'm going to take Jamie into town with me. Hop on, Jamie. Now, Daniel, you can't do that because Roy told me and Bullet not to let you and Jamie out of our sight. Well, you can catch up with us later if you can ever get her to run him. Well, now, Dale, you can't. Look, when Roy tells me to do something, he wants me to do it. You know how mad he gets. Well, ah, oh, Dale. Nellie Bell, why do you have to act like this? Don't I always treat you with kindness? Don't I always pump up your tires myself? Clean your spark plugs once a month? And don't I always buy you the best gasoline and oil that money can buy? Oh, no! I'm sorry, Nellie Bell. It's all my fault. But don't you fret. I'll just run into town and... I mean, I'll just walk into town and get you some gas. Come on, Bullet. <laughs> we have to walk into town. We'll take the shortest way. Rogers and the sheriff. Yeah, but we'll catch up with them. Hey, look over there. That's Dale Evans. She's toting that Jenkins boy. As long as that kid's alive, he inherits the property. Come on. unless you tell us who you're working for. Sheriff, do you know this man? Yeah, it's Milo Scott. I'll give you just one second to start talking. All right, I'll talk. I'll make a deal with you.
Looks like you've got a bad one, Sheriff. Through the shoulder. You better get me back to town. What happened, Roy? Well, the sheriff took a bullet in the shoulder. Can you make it to town, Tom? I'll be all right. I'll take him on trigger with me. My old Scott works for Clinton. Don't talk about it now, Sheriff. First, we'll get you to the doctor. Then we'll find out about Clinton. time to sit down and talk this thing over, and I don't want to argue about it. But according to my calculations, we go this way. Now, Bullet, I was born and raised in this country, and I know every rock and tick-infested cow trail in these parts. So for the last time, we go this way. Now, come on. <laughs> Hold up a minute, Bullet. My feet feel like they were caught in a thrashing machine. My throat's as dry, my taste buds are rattling. I don't think I can go much further, old buddy. You know, if I wasn't so dry, you could hear that sizzle. Well, Bullet, we've come a long way. Well, we can't go much further without a drink. Couldn't you find us some water? With all these trees around here, there must be a little water. Water! Bullet! You saved my life. Oil! Somebody polluted the spring! Anybody that would drain a crankcase in a spring shouldn't be allowed to own a gasoline engine. Did I say gasoline? Oh. Come on, Bullet. We got nourishment for Nellie Bell, and she can get us to water and towel. has the Jenkins kid. Why didn't you jump? We did. Buddy Rogers and the sheriff broke up our play. They got Rollins. I had to kill Milo. You had to kill Milo? Why? He was going to spill everything to Rogers and the sheriff. Oh, you're going too far. We're getting in too deep. Oh, and will you please shut up? You've got a lot at stake. Here's the deed to the Jenkins place. Right out of mortgage on the property. Well, what good will that do? It'll give us a claim on the place till we can get rid of the kid. Get rid of the kid? You heard me. I know you're not going to like this, Jamie, but you got to be nice and clean when you see your mama. Is she all right, Miss Dale? She's going to be just fine, honey. Don't you worry. Hi, Roy. Hi, Dale. Hi, Jamie. Hello, Mr. Rogers. Feeling better? I feel fine. Well, that's good. The doctor said the sheriff's going to be okay, too. Good. Wonder where Patty is. Probably still trying to get Nellie Bell started. Speak of the devil. What happened to you? Have a fight with Nellie Bell? No, I went to get a drink in Jenkins Spring, and he'd gone and emptied a crankcase of oil in it. A crankcase of oil? Yeah, from the donkey engine that powered his well rig. From the donkey engine that powered his well rig? Jenkins was drilling a water well. By a spring? Gee, I never thought of that. And poor Clinton is stuck with all of Lost Valley. You thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking we'd better have a talk with Clinton and get Jamie's property back. Pat, you stay with Jamie, and when you get him cleaned up, don't forget to wash yourself, whether it's Saturday or not. <laughs> well, I guess a little soap and water wouldn't hurt either one of us, would it, Jamie? <laughs> and when we get through, I'm going down to the general store and get you some ice cream and candy. How would you like that, Jamie? I sure would. Atta boy. <laughs> Gee, you got cute dimples. Well, 
help you. Now we want to see Clinton. I'm sorry, he doesn't want to be disturbed. No, I'll bet he doesn't, but we're going to see him anyway. How about it, Dale? <laughs> see Mr. Clinton. Mr. Rogers, Miss Evans. Any luck tracking down those mass killers? Some. Two of them are dead. Splendid. Who were they? Don't you know? Why should he know? Well, they worked for him. What do you mean? You know what I mean. And I suppose you didn't know that Jenkins discovered oil on his property. Oil? In this area? Oh, you must be mistaken. Oil? Well, that's rich. Well, we've got government surveys. They, they show that there's never been any oil discovered in this area. Maybe Pat made a mistake, Roy. I don't think so. But we've got to be sure. You mind if I take a look at these papers? Keep your hands away from that box. Hold it, mister. What are they, Roy? By coincidence, some of Jenkins' papers and letters. If you didn't know about the oil, why did you turn down his application for a loan to develop his oil discovery? Why didn't you get rid of that? Don't be a fool. I have been a fool long enough, Alma. We knew about the oil. We tried to scare Jenkins off. But I had nothing to do with the killing. It was Alma and Clint. Drop your gun. Get Roger's guns. hear about this. They sure will. Reed does funny things to some people. Get going. Yes, sir, Jamie. This is where it all started. I forgot to give Nellie Bell her nourishment. And the path of fortune led me right to this little spring. Aren't you forgetting Bullet? <laughs> well, yeah. Bullet had uh, a little something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a lot of luck's coming your way, young fella. Yeah, sure does. Your mother's getting well, and all those signed oil contracts look pretty nice. You be the biggest typhoon in the country. <laughs> you mean tycoon, Pat. What's the difference? Oh. A tycoon is a very rich person. Okay, let Jamie be the tycoon, and I'll be the typhoon. Well, that figures. A typhoon is a big wind. Oh, now, wait a minute. 
You ought to give me some credit. There I was, stumbling along, half crazed with thirst, taking my last step. Then I saw it. I lunged for it. And hey, hey, Roy, Roy! Oh, 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 oh you dirty! Oh, oh! Oh, he's really greased up now, isn't he? Isn't he, though? He's <laughs> done fine. That's why I called him Deedle. <laughs> well, it's all dogs. All hunting dog, too. Of course, there's a few breeds mixed in, like fox and coon and beetle, but they're all good hunting dogs, aren't they? Well, I suppose so. Why don't you turn him loose? Maybe he's a good trailer. Maybe? <laughs> Listen, if there's any worthwhile animal living and breathing in this vicinity, Deedle will find them. All right, now, Deedle. I want you to show up these here mutts. <laughs> I'm eating persimmons. <laughs> Bye. There now, Deedle. You look like real blue ribbon trade now. Well, go to the house, kid. <laughs> Quiet, you mutt. <laughs> I 
Hey, that old chap, that's a fine pack of hounds you have now. Best in the county. You have the most extraordinary pack of hounds I've ever seen. Who's the MFH? The who? The MFH, you know, the master of foxhounds. Top hat, red coat, black boots, riding crop, all that sort of bilge. Oh, well, if you mean who owns them, Roy Rogers does. Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Rogers. I was told to look him up. Uh, this is the Double R Ranch, isn't it? <laughs> in person, only Roy ain't here. Well, in that case, would you mind very much if I potter around a while until Mr. Rogers shows up? Well, not at all, but how about coming into the ranch house for a pot of tea? 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 Do you mean to tell me you have tea as well as all these noble hounds? Yes. Yeah. My word, the West is really becoming civilized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and our sugar's refined, too. <laughs> Welcome. Well, hi, Gautama. Hi, how are all those grandchildren of yours? Oh, Gautama, I have many great-grandchildren now, 86. <laughs> oh. Expecting 88. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. Gautama, I want to talk to you, Roy. I'll go order my groceries while you talk to the chief. I know you're a friend of Indians, Roy. Always, Garsama. Indian make living from silver out of mine. Belong to Indians for many generations. I know. What about it? Silver disappearing from mine too fast. Much too fast. You mean somebody's been high grade in the ore? Yes. Do you have any idea who's doing it? Garzama tell Bailey. Bailey promised to find out. Now I think maybe Bailey is guilty party. Well, that's a pretty strong accusation. Garzama, no. Maybe Bailey work with his driver, Dan Price. Will you help me, Roy? You bet I will. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Oh, give my regards to Roy. I will. Say, where is he, anyway? Oh, you know Roy. He's probably out there gabbing with some Indians. Oh. See you. Something's up. I'll see you in Mineral City. Hi, Miss Dale. Hi, Dan. I just gave Howard a list of supplies for my restaurant. Do you mind dropping them off for me? Oh, not at all. In fact, I'll be down on your way towards evening. Well, thank you. I just saw Dale Evans outside. Well, don't worry about her. She was in here ordering supplies. It's not her I'm worried about. It's that friend of hers, Roy Rogers. Oh. Do you think uh, the Indians will tell Rogers what's happening? I warned Garthama to keep his mouth shut. I told him that was the only way I could catch these high graders. I don't know. I let Rogers can get mighty nosy sometimes. Well, he doesn't suspect us anyway. If he does get too close to the truth, we'll take care of him. Come on, let's get rid of that stuff in the back room. All right. Indians? That's the trouble with those Indians. Either they say nothing or they gab too much. 
You might be right. I see Dale didn't wait. Well, that's okay. She's heading for Mineral City, and I'm going back to the ranch. I'll be seeing you. All right. Take care of the store. I'm going to ride out for a while. Thank you. Get something? No. You were right about Rogers. He's been snooping around. Well, what do you aim to do about it? Teach him a lesson. Unhitch one of your horses and follow me. Right. How'd you come to find out Rogers was following us? When you pulled out of town, he was standing right behind your wagon. Hope that Rogers didn't see us. Come on. Good boy, Trigger. While you were out at the ranch, Price brought in all those groceries I ordered. He was very obliging, said I could call on him and Bailey any time. Yeah, those two skunks. Dry gulching me and sweet talking you. Roy, look. Greetings and salutations. Oh. oh, hi. What kind of a monkey suit is that? What are you two advertising? I'll have you know, old bean, that I am the master of foxhounds of Mineral City. And this gentleman is my assistant, M.F.H., the Honorable Sir William Wellington Bart, B.A.R.T. How do you do, Mr. Bart? Hi. Uh, no, no, Dale, not Bart, uh, Wellington. You just said Bart. Bart stands for Baronet, Miss Evans. How'd you do? Oh, how do you do? What are you two up to? You look like a fire going someplace to start. We're riding to the hounds, old bee. That's right, Mr. Roger. We thought we'd chase a jolly old fox or two. Well, this is hardly fox country. Yeah, and the last time Pat's dog was out, it treated a skunk. Well, that lop-eared cowhock pot has learned better since. This time, it's fox or nothing. What are you going to use, my hounds? Well, didn't think he'd mind. Besides, they need exercising. Well, it's all right. Dale and I would like to ride along with you for the fun. Yeah, this promises to be fun. I'll change and be right with you. The more the merrier. We'll have a regular hunt with all the trimmers. Oh, I say, I'm afraid I haven't any more riding habits. Oh, that's all right, Sir William. We'll ride Nellie Bell. 
Never mind, Sir William. Red isn't my color. Now, now remember, old chap, it's customary in England, when one sights the brush, to say, tally-ho. Tally-ho. Oh, tally-ho. Enough to the hunt. Tally-ho. Tally-ho. Oh. 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 Is everybody hip-hop? What? We're ready. I say, Diesel, are you ready to go on the hunt? <laughs> He's dead. Dead? You better get the sheriff pass. Right. Bill, sit up, sit you down for trading pillow. I'll bring you right back. I'm sorry the hunt had to end this way, Sir William. Very tragic, very tragic indeed. By the way, you said he was the Indian chief? Yes, of the Acuna tribe. A great silversmith, aren't they? The very best. This is their mine. Ah, uh, double tragedy for me, Mr. Rogers. I came here to purchase Indian silver work. I'm rather a collector, you know. Well, I don't think the Indians will be in any mood for trading. I wouldn't be surprised if they stop all work until after the killer's caught. I just saw Dale right out of town with a doc. That means they discovered the body. What did you have to kill him for? Because he saw me in the mine. Well, you should have been more careful. Look, why don't we make one last raid on the mine and vamoose out of these parts? You vamoose. I got a good business here. And besides, that silver mine is far from played out. Besides, I did the killing, huh? I didn't say that. Well, don't ever think it. Look, Bailey, we're in this together. Partners in everything. You savvy? Yeah, I savvy. He was shot at close range. Didn't have a chance. Oh, there someone ever had an enemy I knew of. Yes, he did, Sheriff. He told me that somebody's been high grading the silver in the mine. Oh? You give me any idea who he suspected? Yes. Bailey and Dan Price. Hmm. Well, I, I can't arrest him without more concrete evidence. Uh, Doc, I reckon you better take charge of the body. Roy, I'll see you at the office and we'll try and figure this out. All right, Sheriff. Hey, Pat, come give Doc a hand. What's the matter, Bullet? <laughs> where the chief was shot. Look at that bandana. This could belong to the murder. You don't think Price and Bailey would go that far, do you? There's someone must have cut somebody stealing high-grade ore. I think I'll take a ride over to Bailey's trading post. Right, boy. I have to get back to the restaurant. I'll see you back in town. Okay. <laughs> Something, Roy? Yeah, I just happened to remember I need a couple of empty boxes for the ranch. Those boxes aren't empty. 
What's in your pocket? One of those boxes? <laughs> Rogers is sure to come back with the sheriff. All right, care about it, silver. Come on, let's get out of here. Doctor. This is all we got time for. Yeah, I guess you're right. Come on. All the silver and many things from the store. I'll go and see what it's all about. You pulling out? That's right. But you have all the Indian silver work. You've got no right to take it. They only gave it to you to sell for them. If I sell any, I'll send them the money. Where are you going? That's my business. Come on, Dan. You can't do this, Bailey. What'd you do that for? I got tired of his gab. We got no time to lose. Ha! When I tried to stop them, they shot me. Looks like this is a job for bullets. Let's pick up the trail, fella.
forward to this. Sheriff, I can think of a few Indians. I have a score to settle with these birds. You're sure right, Roy. Sure glad you got all the silver work you wanted, Sir William. Yes, it was nice having you visit with us. Oh, you've all been so kind to me. Is there any way I could repay you? Well, uh, since you asked, Bart old Bean, old boy, how about trading me one of them fancy red riding outfits for Deedle? Oh, you can have one of my outfits, that old chap. But I wouldn't dream of taking diesel away from you. As a matter of fact, Sir William, she's too high strung and sensitive for me to handle. A dog like diesel needs more time and attention. No, sir, Barthole boy. I just haven't got the time to take care of diesel proper like, you see. I... Roy, look. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Say it isn't so. Now you have the hounds to go with your outfit, fat old chap. Cheerio and happy hunting. <laughs> oh, Beetle. Oh, How could you do this to me? Boy, Dale, help me. What am I going to do? Happy birthday.